Welcome, viewers, players, woodland creatures. I am your tour guide, your truth sayer, your game master, if you will. I am your chauffeur on the cerebral highway. All of you are my passengers. I may be at the wheel, pointing out landmarks as they pass, suggesting the area's best coffee and lactose-free pastries, but you, as my passengers, need only ask, and I'll hang a right over the cliff into oblivion. I work for you, as long as the dice are in your favor. Joining us tonight are passengers Sky Hawkins, Billy Baker, Mickey Jones, Marcus Bennett, and you, live chat audience. This is your show, after all. Remember, this live play is 100% funded by you fellow passengers at home. Your interactions and support of this show bring it back week after week, so thanks are in order, and they go to you. If you have any questions, please mm -hmm. ask. Someone will surely answer. We are using the Kids on Bikes tabletop RPG system as our railway. Do any of my passengers have any questions before we hit the road? Nope. Hmm. No. Great. Roll the intro. Hello, and welcome to Kolak, America's heart. Life is generally easy in Kolak. The spirit of our small town is built around enjoying life, despite our technological empire. Kolak is like Paris. Art, music, and treasures of life are not just incidental. They are central to the spirit of our little town. This is a special gift for visitors and those who live in our vast green valley. Kolak's natural beauty can be thanked to the peaks that tower over us in our four corners, shielding us from the elements. Spend the day at Crater Lake, fed by the ever-flowing Riley River. America's heart. Enjoy our historic Main Street or take a tour of our world-famous Shepherd's Winery, my favorite. Kolak prides itself in being a world leader in renewable energy and advanced medicine, all thanks to our most famous attraction, Synchroneity Tech. Many new families find their home in Kolak, brought in to fill one of the country's most exciting genetic research facilities, many open roles. <laughs> Science is at the very soul of Kolak, unlike anywhere else in the world. Gated by nature itself. We begin again. Tuesday, March 5th, 4.30 p.m. Kolak High School Social Studies teacher Brian Thomas feels his heart beating like a war drum from the base of his earlobes to the tips of his fingers, like his blood was going to rhythmically pierce the skin of his index fingers like some sort of propulsion rocket. He pauses, but only for a moment, places two fingers on his jugular vein. His vision blurs. He's just a teacher. He's scared. He hears yelling coming from the alleyway behind him. His mind is no longer behind the wheel. His feet are moving again. His adrenaline takes over. A moment passes. Or was it ten moments? He's crossing streets. An impact sends his feet away from the ground. His brain continues trying to run regardless. A trash can. He pauses. The mess strewn across someone's yard. He looks up to see a woman looking out of her front window. Her eyes pierce through him. She glances down at the trash, and then back to him. 
his legs begin to move. He has a choice to make. He looks over his shoulder into the direction from which he came back at the woman down at the trash. His adrenaline continues to choose for him. For how long, though, he is not sure. As he runs, he can feel people's eyes on him. He imagines the rumors. The senior faculty laughing over their cups of burnt lounge coffee. His legs give out. His hands are on the ground. His eyes fixate on the pebbles. The consistency of the grain, the smooth, round gravel beneath his palms. He must be off the main road, but still well-traveled. He feels it before he hears it. The fur of a small animal. It's soft. It must be well kept. Remaining primarily indoors, he feels the hard surface of a skull push from under his chin, but yet still soft. Its contact reveals a purr, a vibration that flows through him. The small cat turns its head, merely inches from his own, its eyes locking on his. He can feel its tail wrap around his forearm. As he stares into the eyes, the world around him goes dark. What's in its right eye? Is it moving? The date is Wednesday, March 6th, 1991. The place is Colock Washington High School, home of the Fighting Phoenixes. The school, no, the town, mourns today. Two were lost yesterday to apparent suicide. One to a bullet, the other to a noose. A silence infected the hallways. A shared gasp. Collectively, internally looking for answers. Through the morning, rumors, it's always rumors, find their way like snakes under every rock that shouldn't be turned over. Where is Mr. Thomas? Why was he seen with Sky, Sammy, Marcus, Billy, and Mickey yesterday? Rumor has it, they were all at Mr. Jewel's law office yesterday, and that Mickey's dad, the resident drunk, surely had something to do with the bartender's passing. Juicy. And what about the man seen driving his black Buick through town this morning? carrying around a little notebook, asking questions. Why was he talking to the principal? Why would a suit care about suicides? Why did Skye Hawkins tell Sammy to stay the fuck away from her during lunch period today? All these titillating words, all the ones on the wind, they excite me. And I apologize. I will do better in remaining neutral. I promise. Before I over or underexpose the current state of things, let us check in with your fellow passengers and their current state of mind. Sky? Dear... I, I don't know... I don't remember who I was writing to. I don't remember... much. Except... That I'm reading through this journal and I know that whoever this person is, I, I feel like we were close or maybe I meant something to her. The only time a name is ever mentioned is uh, Sammy Riley plus Rachel Jewell and I'm assuming that's her, whoever this person is, but something's wrong with me. I feel like a part of my life is missing. I feel... I feel empty, and I feel broken, and I don't know, I know this sounds stupid, but with all the suicides that have been happening, it's just really getting in my head. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I don't know if I'm gonna be okay. Billy Baker. Billy's thoughts. March 6th, 1991. Well, 
just another day in Colock, Washington. How could I be surprised that I'm having trouble remembering things? One day, maybe all these lost memories will come flooding back to me and I'll finally understand what's going on. But I guess I'm a little scared to think that knowing might be a bad thing. Sometimes I think there's someone pulling the strings, making me forget the things I shouldn't know. Sometimes I realize how silly that sounds. Yet there are certain things that just don't add up. Not that I don't respect my elders, but ever since I woke up from the coma, I smell a strong scent of bullshit coming from the mouth of every grown-up. Could this just be growing up? How long until I become a bullshitting adult? Right now, I, I don't really know who I can trust besides Tibby. Or I guess I can trust Skye and Marcus and Mickey. Not really sure why we were working together. Again, I swear someone is stealing my memories. But I do remember forming a trust with them. Even though they're all older and cooler than me, I think we can all work together to get some answers, and I think they need my help. I have no idea why I think that. This has all felt really rambly and intuity and gut feeling-y, and I usually try not to think that way, so sorry for all of this. You don't care, you're just a book. Mickey Jones Dear Mom, I thought I could handle this all on my own, and I've been trying to keep a brave face around everyone, but with every passing second I feel like I'm about to snap. I tried to take care of him. I thought maybe I could help him, but I'm in way over my head. I don't know what kind of mess Dad's gotten himself into, but it's a big one, and I don't know if someone's pulling <coughs> his strings. He killed somebody. God, he killed someone. He said he did it for me. And I should be angrier, but I worked so hard to keep him here. Sometimes I think I would have been better off staying with you. I wonder what my life would have been like. Everything would be so normal. I'd live in a normal house. I'd go to a normal school. I wonder if people would have liked me better. But I knew he wouldn't have made it on his own. I never told you, but that's why I chose him instead of you. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm sleeping at the movie theater because I'm too scared at home. And I know if somebody else... I don't know if somebody else might show up there. And I should know better than to pick fights I can't win. But I don't think you can help me anymore. It's too late to get me out of this. And it doesn't matter anyway, because I'm not going to send this to you. But if you find it, tell M I love her for me. And I'm sorry I couldn't be a better big sister. Marcus Bennett. Dear Tandy Computer. The football team's still making fun of me because of the company that I keep. Sky, they understand she's popular, but now I'm hanging out with the coma boy and his friend Tibby and that weird kid Mickey. They've been talking in the locker room, calling me Dorcas. But I guess it's better than all the times they used to call me Hollywood, thinking I was so much fancier than them when I really just was trying to be myself. Actually, I don't know why I'm hanging out with these guys. I mean, they, I even have them in my house, which that's something I normally don't do. I try not to show that off too much. It's already a lot of people make me an outsider for. I don't need them to know my lifestyle. Then things just got really weird. This guy was in the television. Like, not in the show. Like, she was, like, literally in the television. It's pretty crazy. It's like watching the Facts of Life, but just Blair. And then we were able to get her out with this creepy shoveling guy after I talked to the squirrel, of course. That's an entry in itself. It was just so weird. We went on this really unknown adventure that's going to be hard to explain, and I can't remember why. And no luck trying to talk to my parents about it or about their job. They just get quiet. All I know is just I constantly feel like I gave my heart to someone and I don't know who it is or why I do feel this way. The only thing I can know about is some reason in some of my past Tanny entries, I keep talking about having this girlfriend named
As Marcus Select Bennett deletes all. entries. Delete files. Three thirty PM. The bell rings out. The typical joy that flows through the halls is nowhere to be found. The chili cook-off, now a memorial and fundraiser for the families affected by yesterday's tragedy, will be blocking Main Street through the center of town. Our passengers don't have time for such pleasantries. Life must go on, resiliently forward. Marcus grabs his bike and heads down to Taco Bell. Skye hops in her Jeep and makes her way down to her dad's bike shop. Mickey, with duffel bag in tow, grabs a bus to the other side of town for a shift cleaning gum off the bottom of fold-up chairs. Billy... Well, I don't have anything on my schedule for Billy. Where does Billy go? Do I have any tokens? Billy Baker has three tokens. Uh, I want to walk out to the buses and put my hood up um, and I walk past my normal bus 16. I put my skateboard in my backpack and I hop on bus 21 and I use two tokens to be unassuming. That is an auto success as no one notices Billy Baker sneakily hopping on a bus that heads out towards uh, the winery. The winery on the south side of town. Let's follow that thread, Billy Baker. As you sit in the back of the bus, staring out the window, making your way towards the south side of town, it doesn't take long. Kolok is, in fact, a very small town. What is your goal here, Billy Baker? What are you aiming to do? I'm headed to my secret place. Well, unfortunately for those of us who might be listening, or myself as your narrator, I am unaware of such secret place. Could you please inform me of what that may be? So when you get off the bus, there's the winery. If you go through the vines to the other side of the winery, there's trees at the base of the mountains around Kolok. So I'm going to the woods where I have a clearing where I like to sit on a fallen tree and hang by myself and think. It's your fort. Mm -hmm. Great. So as you exit the bus, a couple of other students realize that you were on board, a couple of them throwing insults your way. Come a boy! Yeah, come a boy! What are you doing? Uh, yeah, I guess I forgot where I live. Yes, no one seems that's weird in any way, shape, or form. A lot of kids at school work at the winery after hours collecting grapes and bottling, whatever there is to do in the area. There's not many jobs for high schoolers, and this is one of the more popular spots. Anyone on the grounds probably wouldn't find that in any way strange. I am going to have you roll your flight, though, difficulty of seven, to see if you are able to get past uh, the fences without being seen as you make your way into the woods. Uh, one? Wait, two. That's a two. Mm -hmm. Great. As Billy Baker starts making his way towards the fence on the opposite side of the winery leading into the woods. Hey! Hey, kid! What are you doing? I'm walking through the winery to get to the woods. I don't think you're supposed to do that. Uh, no trespassing? I'm sure that's a thing. I, what, you're not supposed to be out here. Oh, I'm sorry for trespassing onto the winery, but this isn't where I'm going to stay. I'm just using the winery to get to the woods. You're walking through our crops. I'm sorry? What the I fuck, feel like the kid? damage is already done. I mean, I've already walked through them. I, if I could turn around and go back, but uh, it's the same distance to just keep going forward. Billy Baker will roll his charm difficulty yes. of 10. No, that's bullshit, kid. This is private property, man. You're going to get me in trouble. Do I have any tokens? <laughs> Billy Baker has one token. Dang it. You're going to get me in trouble, man. Like, 
They're gonna think I I messed up. Listen, round. listen, you're not gonna get in trouble. Do you know who I am? No one's gonna be mad that I'm here. I have no idea who you are. Why, how, why am I supposed to know who you are? You've probably heard. I'm the coma kid. I was in a coma for 10 years of my life. Who gives a shit? You're messing up my the stuff. The whole town gives a shit. I walk around and do whatever I want, and everyone's just like, oh, forgive him. He's dumb. You can do that, too. <laughs> Wait, so what you're telling me, kid, is you're playing everybody? I'm not playing them. I really am dumb. Billy Baker will roll his brains. Difficulty of three. Come on. Two. <laughs> no, that is exactly what you wanted in that situation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm supposed to believe you're dumb enough to just be wandering around out here in the woods because you were in a coma for 10 years, but you're cognitant enough and self-aware enough to give me that whole story? Okay. The way you say it makes it sound like a really good plan, but I honestly don't follow. Billy Baker now has five tokens. Owen has been two tokens to be unassuming. <laughs> You're going to have to narrate this for me in a way that seems somewhat believable. Hey, man, I think your boss is coming. I want to make what? him, like, turn around. And then I slip between a row of vines. So now I'm on, like, the other row. What the fuck, kid? And I just start running towards the fence. Come on! I can't believe I fell for that shit. <laughs> Billy Baker makes his way through the hole in the fence... Making his way to the other side through the woods. Where are you heading? How far away is this from the winery? It's probably after I get over the fence. It's about 100 yards into the woods. So uh, fairly close. Yeah. It's th The woods are pretty thick, so you, I can't be seen from the winery. Uh, but once you get within the woods, I could be. Billy Baker walks his way up to the old tree that looks like it was possibly knocked over by a strike of lightning. Billy, do you have anything out here next to this tree, this secret place that you go to? Uh, there's a good pile of rocks that, um, it's not like a pile that I put there, but it's like a rock, that, uh, you know, like a large boulder under the ground where rocks are chipping off. So I'm usually just grabbing rocks and throwing them at trees and stuff, practicing my aim. Uh, but carved on the fallen tree are my initials. As Billy Baker sits in his secret place, throwing rocks. Apparently this is what dumb people do in the woods when they need to clear their mind. For sure. You hear the sound of a twig break coming from behind you. Hello? 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 Are you a squirrel? No! Damn. Who is it? Gerard. Are you are you are you B B What if I am your name on the log Yeah that yeah that was me I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get going. I was just uh, walking through the woods and sat down for a sec, but I'm, I'm headed home. Okay. Stay. You now turn to see, coming between a couple trees, an old man wearing ratted clothes, his hair long, dark gray, a long gray beard covered in dirt and filth small twigs sticking out of his jeans ripped in many places as he very slowly makes his way between the trees moving some branches as he sits down on this fallen tree next to you he looks directly at you what are you, what are you doing out here? I live here why would you live here home you could get a home in town yeah I'd, I'd probably prefer to live out here too actually no 
B. B. Billy. Billy. You're special. Do you think? What? Wait. What, what do you mean? You're sad. Oh, yeah. Cool. Why? I don't know. Every time I say don't, I don't know. The counselor says it's depression, but it's not like that this time. You're. Missing someone. Yeah. Yeah, but but who? I don't I don't know. She spoke highly of you. Who? That's her name, or her no. name doesn't exist. Gone. Missing. Yeah. What's this all about? Do you have any? Do you have any idea? The structure. Is weak. The wall is not sound. Rebuild the feet for falls to ground. B. Are you like an old wizard? Maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Did you just make that riddle up? Or did you hear it somewhere? The man takes his hand and points it and just kind of moves it around the town that you see in the valley. Find her name? Yes. And then... And then everything will make sense. No. Why does that matter? I don't know. I guess I just want to have some sort of purpose direction I'm just kind of going through the motions right now me too so if I find her name it's just another step forward Okay, well, Gerard, 
I had a lot of questions, and now I have like a lot more. But I'm tired. You should go get some rest. Yes. I'm gonna go find her name, and then I will let you know what her Thank name is. You. And I'm sorry for carving on the tree. No. I found you. B. B. Billy Baker. Billy. Gerard. I'm gonna pull out my skateboard and start running back to the road. Billy Baker leaves the area, heading through the winery and heading back towards the road. Sky Hawkins. You're currently at work in your father's bicycle shop. Do you mind helping us paint the picture? <clears throat> um, Dad's bike shop is, uh, it's like the biggest one in town, which it doesn't say too, too much. It has like rentals, um, bikes that are kind of like stacked on top of each other for people to see if anyone wants to come in and buy one. I mainly hang out towards the back where the repair section is in case people need to uh, fix a tire or um, have any bike questions. Sky Hawkins sits in the back of her father's shop working on one of the current orders. You can tell that your father's been hovering, wanting to talk to you. He's made multiple attempts to come up close to you, shuffle around anxiously, and then walk back away. He does so again. Um. Hey, uh. Hun, I, I, I don't mean to... Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I... <clears throat> are, are you okay? I, uh... I don't think I am, Dad. Oh, okay. Uh... <clears throat> Sky's father grabs a chair from behind the counter, pulls it up, and sits next to you, looking intently, directly at you. Are you pregnant? Um, <laughs> no, I'm not pregnant. That would be a, that would be a miracle, though. Okay, we can figure this out then. Everything's okay. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. I, I'm really worried about you, though. I, I, I didn't want to say anything in front of your mother, but... Yeah, it's probably best that she uh, just stays out of anything that has to do with me. You, you, she's... She you, just two does gotta, you two got to... Lay off each other, okay? You're both. Dad, I don't say anything to her. I'm just not what she wants me to be, so there's no point. Well, you're a lot alike. I no got way. a call from the principal yesterday. You weren't in class, but your jeep was in the parking lot. <coughs> uh, I, I look if something's going on. You know, you can tell me, right? Yeah. I just don't know if you'd believe me. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, come on, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the cool dad. I run a bike shop. You're pretty cool. And make below minimum wage running this bike shop, right? So relatable. <laughs> you know, I was a teenager once too, and got into some hairy situations. I don't even want to pretend to compare it to whatever you might be going through. That would be uh, irresponsible of me. Uh, but but I'm here. I I'm here if you if you need anything. And I, I won't tell your mom about school yesterday. Lord knows I skipped a couple days. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. I just wish I heard it was because you were doing something fun and not because you're sad. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest with you. I I usually know, right? I, I, really, I usually know what I want, who I am, where I'm going. I don't take anything from anybody. I have goals. Uh, it's not too hard for me to kind of figure stuff out. It's just kind of, it is. Like, it is what it is. I feel like today I don't know who I am. 
I feel like a huge yeah. part of my heart is missing. And it feels hard existing when so much of me is gone. And I can't even explain where it went or what's going on, but this is how I feel. And I know I shouldn't feel this way, but I do. And it's overwhelming and I feel like I'm falling and there's nothing that's going to save me. I sure we don't want to talk to your mom. She's a little bit better at maybe we could get you some someone to talk to. Uh, I, I I I wasn't a young girl, so I don't I don't want to belittle anything you're you're going through. Um, I, I remember around your age, maybe a little younger, when hormones kicked in and. Start yeah. getting hair in weird places. And, oh, that's really uh, gross. With that came a lot of mixed feelings about things and not really knowing where I fit in the world. Mm. And and uh, Yeah, I think at the ripe age of 17, puberty has probably hit me pretty hard. Actually, I feel pretty sick, Dad. Can I just go home? I just want to go home. I think I need to sleep. Uh, Yeah, I can I can take care of this. Good. It's, it's not a big deal. I mean, we're not... We're, orders are slow. Anyway, yeah, uh, I finished up most of my work, so there's not much for you to do. Well, I, I, okay. Well, just you know, there, there's leftovers in the fridge. Um, just be safe. It's ah, that sounds weird to say. Uh, d d d don't do anything that you will regret later, and and you will. Uh, it, it gets better. It does. I think. <clears throat> Puberty gets better. Uh. S sadness? Sadness and puberty. Gets mm. m easier to. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't go away. Oh. I'm not helping. Uh, I think I understand what you're saying. Though. You become more equipped to not care. Uh. That's the wrong way to put it, too. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I, you should write a book. I don't think that's a good idea. I run a bike shop. I'm I gonna... don't know. Maybe we should start making signs, you know? And you just put those little thoughts on a sign and just hang it up in the Yeah, bike like shop. just stop care. No, don't that doesn't sound. Don't care. Be safe. Are wow. you pregnant? Wow. <laughs> I get it now. You know, it's good to. Your sense of humor is back, so. Yeah. We'll, we'll run with that. Um, but I, I can handle it from here. Thanks, Dad. As Sky Hawkins picks herself up and her books and backpack from school and makes her way out into the parking lot to get into her Jeep Wrangler, she spots something that she recognizes. A man. A man in a suit carrying a briefcase, making his way into one of the shops down the way. Hey! Hey, I know you! Excuse me! The man stops. Turns seems surprised to see you. He straightens himself up and stands still. Um, you summoned me. You gave me a card or, or something. Sky Hawkins says this as she crosses the parking lot towards this man as he stands motionless awaiting you to arrive to him. You're out. Surprising. Not for long. I only have 30 days. Right, that's the contract that you signed. I didn't sign that! Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Someone else signed it. And the man opens his briefcase, begins flipping through papers. Um, yes. You did. That's your signature, correct? That's my name. That's not my signature. That's not... I, I didn't do that. I couldn't have. I, I have no memory of that. When I got there, my name was already on the paper. What kind of, like, sketchy business do you guys run? Look for yourself. Miss Hawkins, that piece of paper is a legally binding contract between yourself and the Bank of Mammon. I have nothing to do with that. I am merely wait, a... Wait, wait. This name. Rachel Jewell. Why, why is this name... Why is this name here, too? Do you, do you know this person? I know nothing. 
Uh, like, why do you wear a tie then? I am <laughs> the in between. <laughs> oh, as all people with wears ties have their in between. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, oh, my head's so foggy. But what do you mean the in between? You're like the person who summons people and like. I'll be going. I have a job. To wait, wait, do. sir, sir. Just wait. Just, just, just wait. I just. What do I do about this? I, I didn't... This isn't my name. I. Uh. Sky Hawkins will roll her charm. Difficulty of seven. <laughs> do I have any tokens? You have nine tokens, Sky oh. Hawkins. Nice. Um, I'll use two tokens. I rolled a five. <coughs> er. Yes. Uh, okay. Math. <laughs> well, that is for you to keep if you would like. I have many copies. Please. Um, thanks. You signed it. You should have got one at signing. No, I didn't. But, uh, see, that's the thing. I, if I don't have one, this is the first time I've received this, then couldn't I have not signed it? Like, that doesn't make that's sense. That's not for me to decide. I am neither judge nor jury. Then then who decides? I am the in-between. Who, who, I didn't know you are. But who should I talk to, then? You can take it up with the Bank of Mammon if you wish. Though they're not currently taking appointments... Most likely, you'll be able to reach them on... He places his hand on the paper, moving it down just to get a good look. Uh, yes, I believe it says there, April 4th? Yeah. Yes, I believe you'll be able to talk to them then. What if... What if they don't want to hear anything I have to say? What if I don't get to come back from that? What if that's the end of me? Is that what the contract says? If so, then correct. I didn't write it. I don't even read it. I'm not legally allowed to do so. I don't even get this. It doesn't make sense. I understand that I will be required to pay in full the remaining balance of ENOLCR-81 and any interest present. Interest will continue to occur. This doesn't make sense. I don't understand. You'll have to take that up with the Bank of Mammon. This is the contract that you signed. But why do I have to take on Rachel's debt? That's the agreement. Why would Isn't I? That the agreement. Yes, that's what yes, it that, says. That, the the outstanding yes. balance has not been met by Rachel Jewell and has prepared this document to extend the remaining balance to that of Sky Hawkins. This Rachel person sounds like why would she, why would she do that to me? Uh, from the language that's being used, it sounds as if uh, whatever debt that Miss Rachel Jewell had is now your debt. How does... I don't understand. Okay, well, you are... Well, thank you. You're welcome. I have a job to do, so I must be continuing on. Cool. And please don't call my name or uh, reference me in public ever again. You did the same, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> the man walks into a shop across the way, and as he crosses the door into the shop, you don't see him through the window. It's as if he crossed... Somewhere else. We go now to Mickey Jones and Brad Avery as they clean gum off the bottom of seats at the local Kolok Theater. Uh, you're really quiet today. Yeah, it's been a rough couple days. Didn't we have someone else here to help with this stuff? I feel like I'm taking up more shifts than I used to. I feel like I'm working just as hard as I've always worked. Which is like barely, but... Yeah, I mean, a little. Yeah, a little. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. I used to only work four days, and this week I put in five. Doesn't make much sense. Yeah, it's like we're suddenly short-staffed, but I don't remember anyone else being here. Yeah. Weird. I'm not going to think too much more about it, though. It's, it's hard. Just strange. Yeah. Um, by the way, I saw you walk in with a duffel bag. Um, of yeah, I, yeah, no, it, um, sleep over with friends. Uh, I, I, <laughs> you know, uh, Mickey, if you ever if you ever need a place to stay, my parents have an extra bedroom 
I, I, I know I've, I, I heard your dad saw what happened uh, yesterday. How many, is everybody talking about that? Yeah. Great. I mean, the, the, pa the paper even wrote an article about it. Your dad was the only person that saw him shoot himself. So everybody's kind of wondering how you're doing. You know what? That's not totally true. You know how people are. I, yeah, I'm I know wondering. they don't care. I'm worried. I, other people, it's just drama for drama. It's not new for me. Look, I'm fine. I'm just staying with a friend. That's why, that's why I have the duffel. Um, whatever my dad does, whatever he saw, whatever his business is, it's nothing to do with me. But thanks, Brad. Yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to pry. Where did you sleep last night? A friend. You have friends? Look, you don't know my whole life. I could have friends. You just might not know them. I, I just don't really ever hear you talk about friends or anything other than books, so... I'm just worried about you, that's all. You don't have to worry about me, Brad. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I have friends. And I'm fine. Okay, pretty sure you can sleep at my place if you want, but... I know that you'd love that, Brad, but I don't know if your parents would be so cool with that. No, no, I talked to him about it already. Uh, you asked your parents already? Well, I told them that you're going through a really rough spot, and I saw that you were carrying around a bag of clothes, and that you probably had no place to stay, and you're just a, you're just a kid who's probably got a really fucked up dad. You know, if nothing else, I'm utterly surprised by how much attention you're paying to me. But... I'm fine. Okay. I won't... It, it offers there if you need it. Yeah. Uh, I think you missed a piece of gum over there. <coughs> okay. Yeah. We go now to... Marcus Bennett. Working at the local Taco Bell gas station combo. The Taco Bell Express. With his friend, Mallory. Hey, uh... Marcus. Yeah. What? I saw Sky at school today. Yeah. So you guys got her out of the TV. Yeah. Yeah, we did. That's so fucking crazy, man. <laughs> she I'm got canceled. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are we going to do next? Like, I'm in on it now, right? <coughs> what do you mean? Your, your girlfriend. My what? You told me about a girlfriend. I'm I didn't believe you at first. guy? What? No. No. No, no. No, I'm not. Do you like this guy? No. I just said I'm not Sorry. dating her. You just mentioned her and then you mentioned my girlfriend. Weird. No, no, no man. What are you, you talking told about? Me, you, you told me you had a girlfriend. Yesterday. We had a whole conversation about it. I didn't believe you. You got really pissed off at me. And then I apologized. Were you messing with my computer? What? There was something in my computer about it. Sorry, I just blanked for a second. I. What were we talking about again? We're talking about your... Dude, what the fuck happened last night? Okay, fill me in on everything. How did you get her out of the TV? We went to some graveyard... There was a giant dude there with a shovel. We yeah, the, 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 the shovel's your shit. Yeah. Yeah. He pushed it down. She was free. And that's really all I remember. Look, man. There's a lot of crazy shit going on right now. Didn't... But I just... Can uh, we just... Can we, can we just not? I just, like... I just need, like, something, like, didn't normal, okay? Okay, but didn't Mr. Jewel hang himself in that graveyard last night? Did you see something? If you saw something, you gotta say something, man. I don't have anything to say, man. Look, you, you know what? Marcus, dude! Mallory turns and grabs a paper off of the stand in the gas station, holds it up to you, and points at the photo from the graveyard where they've blurred out Mr. Jewel's body, but you see the empty grave that was dug by the shoveler himself and the TV that rests inside. That's fucking Sky's TV, man. I grab the paper and just crumble it up and throw it in the trash. 
next to the Dale beef. Dude, I don't want to talk about it. Can we just have a normal work day? What's, you know, we work at Taco Bell Express. What's... No, that sucks. That's the most depressing thing ever. I can't believe I'm about to say this. Mallory. You, 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 yesterday, you, you introduced me to a talking squirrel. I'm just supposed to... Uh, fucking tacos. Oh, hey. You know what? A talking fucking squirrel, man! Dude, shut, dude, shut up. You calm Nobody's down. Nobody's gonna believe it. I'm talking squirrel. Talking Stop squirrel. it. Stop it. Okay? I don't know what's going on. I don't want to keep thinking about this. There are things that I can't remember. There's weird things going on. I just need one normal day. You know what? <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this. Give me one. What? Give me one. What? You have been saying for so long you want me to join you and you always made fun of me about Mr. Goody Two Shoes Marcus. Well, okay, today is the day. I will smoke one with you, all right? Just give me one. Just give me something. I just need to forget that the last couple days happened and that is the way to do it. Uh, Come on, I'm finally, look, I'm finally gonna do it with you, man. Uh, I don't, I've never actually, uh, I was lying. Wait, you sell weed, but you've never smoked weed? Yeah. I'm a little How? nervous. That's a common thing. Dealers don't do. Like, you don't right? Even, you don't even That's sample it? You don't even like, like, what if it's not even weed? What if it's just like blades of grass that someone cut from a lawn and just put it in a bag and was like, oh, it's weed. You don't even know. People would do that? I don't know. In this town, I wouldn't be surprised. Have I been selling grass? Well, I mean, yes, but I'm talking about like actual grass as opposed to like grass, the slang term Look, for man, weed. If you, if, if you want some, I'll I'll sell you some. I don't think it's gonna make you feel better. You're really gonna, really gonna make me pay for it? I thought, I thought maybe you know, just for my first time. I, I heard it. I've seen the movies. You know, like they always give you the first one for free, and then then that's when you get hooked. How in the fuck else am I supposed to pay for college, I don't man? Know, man, I, the only thing I've learned about these things is from after school specials, and this that's what they always expensive. do. expensive. How expensive can that be? It's just grass, and it might and be it's actual grass. Fucking illegal, man. There's there's like a yes, which is why I have kept my mouth shut and covered for you all this time, but. Look, man. Well, what are you? Th are you threatening me now? Are you trying to blackmail me to give you weed? No, I'm not trying to blackmail you. A I'm fucking talking squirrel! Will you shut up about the squirrel? I just, I just want to grab it. it, it if it's like if it's his pocket or something, I'm just gonna grab it. He's wearing a jacket, and you know that you often see him kind of fiddling around with a little bag that's inside his jacket. I'm pocket. gonna grab it out of his pocket. I'm gonna have you roll for uh, Marcus. Will roll his. This is an interesting one. I'm going to have you roll your charm. Difficulty okay. of seven. All right. Marcus Bennett. Three. <laughs> Marcus Bennett currently has five tokens. <coughs> I'll, uh... Do it. I'll... I'll... <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll use four. I'll use four. Marcus yes. Bennett reaches into the pocket of Mallory, taking out the small bag of marijuana that Mallory had currently been hiding in there. Whoa, 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 man, come on! What do you do with this? How do you do it? Maybe not take it out in the middle of the <laughs> fucking gas station? Well, can we go to that bag? You're worried about me ta talking about a talking squirrel in I here, and you pull my weed out in the middle of the... Oh put it the God. fuck away, dude! So I put it inside one of the taco, the soft taco shells to hide it. What has gotten into you today? I don't know. I just, I know this seems abnormal, but really, this is like the most sane thing that's been going on in a while. I would believe that. I didn't yesterday. But then you introduced me to a squirrel stop, that you talked to. Talk, I couldn't stop. hear I don't it, hear but about you had squirrel. a whole conversation with it. I don't it. want to talk about that. You might summon him. It broke into your dad's office and got papers out. Whoa, what whoa, the whoa, whoa, fuck? Shh, shh. Definitely can never speak about me trying to break into my dad. He found out. 
He even like grabbed my shoulder, squeezed it really hard. Whoa. He knows something is up. That's why I need things to go back to normal. But that's the problem, Mallory. As much as I want to walk around this town and I like everything is normal, I'm always going to know in my head that something's not normal. And the sad part about it is I don't even freaking know why. All right, man. Let's uh, pull down the blinds and I'll show you how to roll a joint, I guess. So I put. I'm not gonna smoke it though. I gotta. I gotta stay fresh. That's fine. Stay. But you're gonna have to teach me how to do it because I have no that's clue. That's fine. I roll them all the time. So I put a little. Sign. I'm sure I've got contact high. That, that, that's no doubt. All right. I just personally, I'd like to keep myself really sharp. Well, that's you know? all I've been doing my entire life, being sharp. I've been trying to follow the rules all my life, and look where it's got me. All right. You know what? Everyone's gonna smell this. Dude, we're gonna Taco Bell Express. It's not, it's, it's normal. I bet we could squeeze out a bunch of hot packets. Kind of yeah. like. Or, I mean, but also, have you seen what the What if we laced it with a hot packet? A hot packet weed? Now you're talking crazy, but I'll try it. Whatever. For someone who doesn't smoke weed, you got a lot of weird ideas of confections with I it. I put weird shit in there all the time to people I don't like. Anyway, um, this is bad business, but whatever, man. Sure. They keep buying. It's all good. Someone put a sign up, and it's a sign... That's like a, it's like a little, like it looks like a little, uh, but like a paper cuckoo clock. Okay. But it's a taco, and it just says like, back in a few minutes. Great. As the blinds go down inside the Taco Bell Express, we're going to move our way across town to that of Billy Baker, who rides his skateboard, but in the direction of where? Uh, I'm going to head home. Billy Baker making his way towards his house. I would say at this point, you've already gotten there. As you walk inside, your mom is quite surprised to see you at home, in fact. Hey, Mom. But Billy, are you home earlier than usual? Yeah. Uh, Everything okay? Just rough couple days. Yeah? Figured I'd... You want to talk about it? Come and get some rest. Um, no... I don't really have anything to talk about. I do have a couple questions for you that maybe you could help me with. Yeah. Um, yeah, shoot, shoot. Yeah, Go for yeah. It, kid. Quick, quick question. Have a seat. Here, well, you want some Kool Aid? Do we have any Sunny D? Of course. We always have Sunny D. Craving Sunny D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Baker's mom opens the fridge, grabs a Sunny D pack, places it on the table. Why do I have 10 fingers? Oh. No one else does. Going right at it. Yeah, is that a tough question? Why is that a tough question? Well, it's... it's. You know, I thought this might happen today. Yeah. Why did you say that? Well, I'm, I'm getting there, Billy. All right, remember we've talked about this. When you're having a conversation with someone, it's a two-way street, okay? Uh -huh. you, you, you can't just demand Two certain way. things. It's, well, we, we were, we were a little worried that this might come up today, given everything that's been going on with, well, the, the, the suicides, I'll just put it bluntly. It was just one suicide. What? You didn't hear about the other one? Oh, right, two. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Right. Well, <sighs> some things happened years ago, Billy. You you were a wild kid. Uh huh. Yeah, you, you had nine fingers. Like How, the rest of us. Okay. Um, this is gonna sound really strange. You and Mr. Jewel are, I don't want to say connected, because that feels like the wrong word to use, son, but... Mr. Jewel, the guy who killed himself. We know let's say we are connected to him more than he realizes he's connected to us. And your father and I have talked about this a lot, and 
I, I think it's good that we're honest with you, um, but it's been a rough day for us too. We'll, we'll forever regret that we never found the courage to talk to Mr. Jewel before he took his own life. Uh-huh. So, why do I have ten fingers? We're getting, we're getting there, okay. Billy. Um, it's, we're having a conversation. It's a tough one for your mom. Um, some things are hard to answer. I it like having ten fingers. This shouldn't be hard. You should. I feel like I'm at, I'm at an advantage. You are at an advantage. This is, this is great. Despite the small, unfortunate situation some of the townies might put you in, uh, you are much better prepared for the world. Yeah, I don't know why people still live here whenever they're born with nine... Like, clearly something's wrong. Well, honey, it's not everyone that's born here. It's just a small group of us. Those so why do I have ten fingers? Time. Well, you were born with nine. Yeah, and that doesn't make sense. And then you got into a coma for ten years. Billy, have we ever told you how you got in that coma... I was about to ask that as well. Great. And then I have several follow-up questions. Oh, well, you know, um, well, let's just knock them out, Billy. Mom, why do I have ten fingers? We're getting there, honey. Uh, it's part of a conversation. Could we get there quicker? I don't really like your tone right now. Sorry. Being a little demanding. I'm listening. Good. Drink your sunny tea. So... Oh, I just gotta say it. Mm -hmm. You're the reason Mr. Jewel was in the hospital and that his family died. His family? Yeah. You caused the accident, Billy. I caused it? Yes. Go on. You were a rambunctious kid. Always walking off in the woods alone. I know it's annoyed and annoys the hell out of us, uh, always scaring us that way. And it was raining that day. And I guess you just decided it was time to take a walk for some odd reason. And it appears you were on the side of the road and came around a turn, mountainous area just outside of town. You walked four miles as a five-year-old, Billy. That's just... Just unheard of, and... <sighs> we didn't find you right away. Apparently, when the car swerved, it spooked you, or something, and you, according to the authorities, slid and or jumped out of the way down the ravine. Took us a while to find your body in. So we thought we had lost you, and I Mr. was in a coma. Jewel lost a lot. He, his family, yes, died in the car accident that I caused. Well, caused is caused. Kind of sounds like there was malintent. You're just a you were you were a five year old kid wandering around on the mm -hmm. road. And my and parents weren't keeping tabs on me. We were so keeping tabs you were a rambunctious right little kid and that's Billy? why i have 10 fingers well we're getting there okay you had nine you were in a coma we thought we'd lost you for a long time and well a long time went by a long time your father and I had lost hope. Your body kept growing, getting bigger every day. Weirdest thing. Some doctor came to us, said they had a, <clears throat> a way to bring you back. And uh, we said yes. And it worked. And now you're here, Billy. That doctor's a real hero. Yeah. Real hero. 
And... Did he give me ten fingers? Along the way? It grew back. Just like your brain. We watched it happen slowly. Every day, your finger grew in, your cognitive function started restoring. Have you ever wondered, Billy? Now, we know you play dumb for the rest of the town, Billy. You're quite advanced for a five-year-old. Yeah, I was going to ask. Um, why? You just got smarter every day and recovered so quick. After the procedure, it's a miracle. But you're a miracle, Billy. Even though you're still a little shit sometimes. So the thing about like learning things is that you have to like you have to be shown those things and you know, you have to absorb them in some way. Right. How do I know these things that they I should They were doing something like a... I'm sure you've seen it in movies. Uh, have you heard about how sometimes people whisper things to you while you sleep? And it gets into your... Uh, what do they call it? Your subconscious? Well, as you were going through your therapy, they had these headphones on you. And they said it was catching you up to speed. Hmm. Alright, Mom. Thanks. That's... That's... That's it. Oh. Okay. Um... That well, wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Okay. Well, uh... I'm gonna go up to my room and well, deal with the way of knowing I, I just... that I made a man kill himself. How did you make a man kill himself? Billy? Oh, yeah, well, he, he lost his family because of me, and then I went to his but law you, that office. That was a long time ago. A couple days ago. Excuse and, me? Yeah, and he was really upset. I was like, well, if I had known the information that I made his family die, I probably wouldn't have said the things I said. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm probably definitely the reason he hung himself. Hanged. B B Billy, uh, what, 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 what were you doing... Mr. Jules' law office. I don't really remember. Okay, I'm gonna need you to remember, Billy. I'm gonna need you to try really hard to remember for me, okay? Did you go to the authorities, Billy? Did you? Did he see? You said something? Yeah, to... the authorities probably know about it. Uh. I'm gonna I'm gonna call your father, okay? Uh, okay. Just I'm gonna go up to my room. Yeah, uh, take your Sunny D with you. And don't don't do anything stupid. Billy Baker makes his way up to his room as his mother turns and goes towards the hanging phone on the kitchen wall. <coughs> Billy Baker, is that what you're doing? <coughs> I'm gonna go up to my room. Great. Billy Baker goes up to his room. Sky Hawkins, uh, where did you go or where are you going after you <clears throat> left this parking lot? Um, the confusing man with the tie, who seems somewhat professional but kind of stupid, he left me with all these questions and it made me go back to this journal that I have. And um, there's some names and maybe the people in this journal that... Uh, are you... Are, is this... Just kind of speaking out loud to yourself as you're thinking. Okay. Yes, Rachel. Maybe this these names that Rachel mentioned, maybe maybe they can help me figure out what what the heck's going on, or if they knew her, what her debt was, and why I took it on. So I'm I want to look for this this person, um, Angela Lung uh, is one of the names that keeps popping up. Then someone named Daniel, and then there's a sign. I found this symbol on Gerard's tent, on 10 different buildings around town. Maybe if I go around and find these these symbols, I might be able to find this Angela person, or Gerard. So I wanna get in my Jeep and I wanna start looking. Okay. Sky Hawkins gets in her Jeep and tries driving around to see if any of the things in this journal that she's currently holding on to 
represent anything to her in this mystery. We go now back to the movie theater as Mickey Jones stands at the front entrance uh, waiting for her shift to come to a close. Still a couple hours to go as she sees Sammy walking in. Now, Mickey Jones, you would remember everything that you've experienced with Sammy in the last couple days, just not why in the world you would ever hang out with Sammy in the first place. Uh, Mickey! Sammy? Yeah. What the hell? What? Why are you guys acting so strange around me? I thought, I thought we were all in this together. What were we doing? In what together? I mean, I thought that was all done with. Rachel! Who? Was that the, the whole fuck? thing? We got Sky back. Wait, Sky? Is that not it? Sky was at school today? Yeah, I think so. I didn't go. I've just been trying to get to the bottom of everything. I've been looking for Rachel. You got Sky back? Yeah, Ra- Who's... How did you get her out of the ground? It's a long story. Um, but what... What, who's Rachel? What have you, you skipped school for that? What the f- I'm the only one that remembers I'm the chosen one. Listen, if you're on, if you're having like an episode, you might want to like. It's up to me now. <laughs> I'm the only one that can save Rachel. I knew it was always going to be like this. You know, I work in a movie theater, so I see a lot of movies and I get where you're going. I don't think you're a chosen one? You don't remember Rachel. Everyone else has forgotten Rachel. Are you sure you are not the crazy one? Because you seem a little crazy. We talked about this yesterday. You might have to catch me up to speed. I don't know of Rachel. Okay, next moves. Does Sky know anything or... Uh, I haven't talked to her today. All right, it's up to me now. It's up to me. I realize you're saying all these out loud. (laughs) Cut back to, quickly, the home of Billy Baker as a knock on the door comes from downstairs. You hear your mother walk open the door. You hear some quiet whispering, and then you hear out, Billy! Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. Downstairs, now! As you walk down the stairs, Billy Baker, you see a man standing at the doorway. This man, very slender and tall. He's wearing a long jacket, black undercoat, a tie, and he's holding what appears to be pieces of candy in his hand. Is this the same guy that took Sky? Or does it no. appear to be? Okay. Does not look the same. Uh, Billy Baker. Yes. Butterscotch? Sure. Great. For you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one too. Okay. Bye. I turn around and run back up to my... (laughs) Young Mr. Baker, we're going to chat very quickly. Please enjoy this butterscotch with me. Oh, (sighs) okay. I've got it from here, Miss Baker. Hi, Billy. Hello. What's your name? I'm required by law to show you my badge. Ah. The man holds up his badge. Agent Bucket. FBI. You shouldn't take candy from a stranger, Billy. But now we know each other. I haven't eaten it yet. It's okay. Are you sure? It's good. You just made me think it's not good. (laughs) It's up to you, Billy. How are you feeling? Pretty well. Billy Baker follows this man as he sits on the front porch of your house sits and kind of turns sideways, leaning comfortably as he watches you. He never takes his eyes off of Billy Baker. Pretty well. Billy. Mm -hmm. You 
You have things to tell me, don't you? Did my dad call you? No. Oh. Um. Okay, well, so I was delivering paper. Okay. A few days ago. I'm the paper yes. boy. Great. And I went to Mr. Jewel's house. And I don't remember why, but I was frantic about something. You spoke to Mr. Jewel. Yeah. And, uh... The man takes a notebook he was pretty, out of his coat pocket. He was pretty upset with me. And I don't remember... You upset Mr. Jewel. Yeah. A good. lot. Not good. He I, killed himself. Uh-huh. And I'm starting to think that it could be because of me. Because... Interesting. Then... I, I don't remember how, but I somehow... I know he had a family. So I think I went to go say... Sorry about his family at his law office. Made him really mad, too. Uh, sorry then, about his family. Yeah. Why were you sorry, Billy? Well, I know he had a family, and I know they died. Yeah, but why were you sorry? What did you do, Billy? I don't remember where I went, and that's just... I assume that's why I went. I saw the video. Quite sneaky. Yeah. No one really pays attention to me. It's kind mm. of funny. I am, Billy. Uh... So anyway, I made him pretty upset. And then a couple couple days later, he, he killed himself. Or I guess, you know, it was the same day? It was three hours later. Yeah, so it's probably definitely my fault. Because then I it just is... found out that I'm the reason his family's dead. Yes, 1980. Yeah, so that's been my day. All coming together. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I feel pretty bad, but also... Do you, Billy? You don't seem too broken I feel, up about it to me. I feel bad because I know I'm supposed to, but... None of this is... I mean... It doesn't really add up, does it, Billy? It doesn't add up, and also... It's a very strange town you live in. Here. I shouldn't have been running around in the street, sure. But are you going to blame a five-year-old kid no, for doing not. that? And then, are you going to blame a five-year-old kid... I mean, six now, if you're going by my brain, for then going to ask questions about a thing you didn't know way. about. So, I guess I don't feel bad. I do feel bad that there's a man that's dead, but... Yeah, I don't think you do. It's not my fault. I have everything I need. Thank you, Billy. All right. Have a Wait. good day. The man's What's stands. your first name? My first name? Are we on first name speaking terms now, Billy? Yeah. That's a wonderful. Are you with the FBI? I showed you my badge, Billy. I don't know what that means. Can you show me again so I can look at it? The man takes. What's it like? What's it say? It says FBI, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> it says FBI, Billy. Mm. So, first name. Agent Bucket. I'll let you know when we're on first name speaking terms, Billy. You've been saying my first name this whole time. <laughs> well, I have that privilege. Here, you can give this to the next kid. I gave that to you, Billy. That was a gift. You're a stranger. I didn't learn your first name. If I tell you my first name, will you take the butterscotch, Billy? Sure. Perry. Perry Bucket. FBI. <laughs> Billy, are you laughing? <laughs> no. Billy, do you understand the severity of the things you just told me? No. It's very clear that you do not. I sure don't. We'll be talking again soon, Billy. I'm going to go talk to your friends. My friends? The Tibby? people in the video. You were on video. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean... More specifically, Billy. You should have seen I'm that trying they to didn't put together really why. have anything to do with any of the talking to Mr. Jewel. I'm definitely the reason he killed himself. Right. Would that explain why you were at the bar where the man supposedly committed suicide just moments before? I have eyewitness accounts. Of Mr. Thomas's car carrying all of you at that bar at oh, that time? Oh, no, that's that's where Mickey's dad worked. 
We were just going to see Mickey's dad. Doesn't work there. He's a patron. Uh, yeah. He's called mean, it in. I don't get to go inside, so I don't know what's going on in there. Right. What happened outside? That's a good question. Thank you, Billy. We're done. Have a good day. Tell your mother I said thank you. Is that a mom joke? Excuse me? Why should I say... What did she do for you? She opened the door. <laughs> tell her Tell her yourself. I'm leaving. Mom! Carrie Bucket says thank you. Your mother and I are not on first name basis. I'll tell her your first name. <laughs> I have my eye on you, Billy Baker. We'll speak again soon. Okay, I'll be good. I sure hope so. Agent Bucket makes his way back to his long black Buick and pulls away from young Billy Baker's house. Um, real quick, uh, do I have a phone in my bedroom? <coughs> let's roll for, let's roll for brains. Difficulty of nine. Three. Billy Baker has nine tokens available. I think I'll use six of them. Good for Billy Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Baker has a rotary phone <coughs> in his bedroom. Oh, shit, but it's probably connected to the same line as the rest of the house. Of course it is, Billy Baker. <laughs> Did you think you would have a private line? <laughs> The 90s were a long time ago. I don't remember how that shit works. <laughs> it's still the same at the house that we grew up in. <laughs> remember, if we still pick it up in the basement, we hear our neighbor's phone calls. We live this life. Is it a separate line, though? From the rest of the house? I'm asking, in, in our current story, is it a separate line if I roll high enough? <laughs> if you roll high enough, Billy Baker, then... <coughs> Anything is possible. I don't even want to test it. Uh, I want to run upstairs. Mom, Dad, the FBI had some weird questions for me. I'll talk to you about it after I poop. Billy Baker will roll his charm <laughs> difficulty of 10. <laughs> oh, God. Six. Billy Baker has four tokens available. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use them. <laughs> You're using tokens to poop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hon, but when you're done, we're going to have a talk. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I just really got to go. Ugh. So I'm running up to my room and uh, picking up the phone <clears throat> and calling some people. Who would Billy Baker like to call? I'd like to start by calling uh, Mickey or try calling Mickey's house. There is no answer. Billy Baker has a phone book in front of him. Things actually did used to work this way. Oh, uh, I'll call the movie theater. So I call Billy the Baker theater. calls the movie theater. As the only person working at the front desk, you hear it ring. Sammy is continuing to talk to you and blow his own mind. Okay, I just pick up the phone and ignore Sammy. Great. Hello? Hi, is Mickey there? Uh, yeah, it's me. Billy? Hi, uh, yeah. So, um, the FBI is going to come talk to you. Uh, what? Heads up. Why? Um, I think it's about the whole thing where I broke into Mr. Jules' office. I think they think that we might have something to do with it, especially because we were at the place we're where the other guy... We were all on tape. Yeah, and we were also at the place where the other guy died, uh, where your dad was. My dad. So the FBI has some questions, and uh, just... Uh, also, I think... I feel... I, I feel like we should all... Meet up, me and you, and Marcus and Sky. Uh, what about Sammy? Cause he's kind of here and freaking out a lot. Yeah. Something about a Rachel. Sammy too. Wait, Rachel? Yeah, I don't know who that is, but he's talking about being the chosen one. I don't really know. I don't know who Rachel is, but I I know someone who might want to hear that name. So. All right. Definitely 
can you call Sammy and I'll call the other two? Yep, he's standing next to me. Oh. Hey, Sammy. Who is it? It's Billy. Um, Billy! Ask him if he remembers Rachel. He can hear you. You're yelling a lot. He can hear you probably. Billy, can no. you remember Rachel? No, I don't remember Rachel. I'm the fucking said no. chosen one! You're not a chosen one. I'm the only one that can save her. All right, you're meeting up with us. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll tell everybody I'm the only one that knows. I think, okay. I think we should go to the bridge. The one on the east side of the east bridge over by Crater Lake. All right, we'll lock up here and meet you there. Okay, cool. Um... I might be a little late. I think I have some explaining to do with my parents. I'm going right. to call the other two. I'll meet you there in, in an hour. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. We cut now to Marcus Bennett. Marcus, paint this scene for us. <coughs> so we're in the, um, we're in the, we locked up, we're in the back. I still have the weed bag in the side of the soft taco shell, but I pull it out now and I'm just looking at it. And Mallory's there with me. And I'm just, I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, I mean, I know people like usually rolling in things, but like, can you just eat it? Like Popeye? So like, <laughs> like, just eat the, I don't know, I mean, man. We could, I mean, we, or I guess you're supposed to like roll it in paper or something. Yeah. I don't know. I'm yeah, new yeah, to this. Yeah. Just... As he takes the weed back from you, you hear a bang on the metal sheets that you had pulled down on the Taco Bell Express windows. M Marcus Bennett. Whoa, 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 whoa. FBI. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the one time I touched weed, the FBI showed up! <laughs> oh, get the hell. Get the fuck out of here, man. That's not. Yeah, suck my dick, Shut dude. Up, You're not the Save me, I! I will not be sucking any dick. Please do uh, come outside, uh, both of you. Go, no, Molly, no. run! Fuck you, dude. No, you're not. It it's not the fucking FBI. It could be, but just chill out. Is somebody fucking with us? They probably says, come back here. We're not supposed to be closed up. Or Eat a dick, asshole! Come, Mallory, stop it. We don't know who it is. All right. Uh, I'm going to come out. Agent Bucket, FBI. Please do. So I'm going to walk out. I'm not going to roll it up. I'm going to walk out the back entrance and walk around. And walk to the convenience store and go and walk in. I don't have the weed anymore either. I gave it left to Mallory. He still has it. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Marcus Bennett. Yes. That's me. Agent Bucket. You wouldn't be having have me a sports agent trying to recruit me for college. I already Don't give said me that a fancy car. You FBI. Know. I know. Mentioned already. Do I need to repeat myself? No. I am fine. legally obliged to show you my badge. Um. Yeah. So what brings you here? You like tacos? Oh. Burritos? No. Uh, most likely murder. What do you mean murder? I don't know. I'm asking you the questions, aren't I? Who got murdered? Butterscotch. Please. Okay. Do you have any coffee? We have this drink where it's like a Mountain Dew mixed with ice <laughs> and like a berry <laughs> twist. But there's a coffee in the convenience and the, store and the portion. Gas portion. station. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Okay. The man walks over, <laughs> kind of awkwardly, moving between the aisles, looking. Makes his way to the coffee machine. You see him pour, but as he does it, he's staring directly at the mug. You say you're with the FBI? Agent Bucket. Um, what's this about a murder? Could have told you it wasn't gonna be good coffee. You have terrible coffee. I just read the instructions and pour it in. <coughs> you should probably go to like a restaurant or a diner or are you gonna be okay, sir? <coughs> As an employee, I'm obliged to tell you that according to our rules, we are not 
responsible for what happens to you after you drink the coffee. I'll pay for the coffee. Okay. It's only 57 cents. Be quiet. I'm asking questions. FBI. Didn't really ask anything. You just drank coffee Marcus. and spit on my floor. I'm going to clean it up later. What? I already talked to your friend Billy Baker. He told me everything. What do you mean, everything? I don't know. You tell me. Well, he told you everything. You can tell me. <laughs> I'm asking the <laughs> questions. <laughs> Okay. I've had. A, I don't know what you need from me. I didn't do anything. <coughs> Are you talking about the the suicides? Is that what you're calling them? That's what they are. That's what you're calling them. It's in the news, everything one knows the news uh, is real. Well, they may have jumped the gun. I'm here, aren't I? What's Why else what, would I be? Here? What gun? <laughs> what, what's that? What are you doing? I'm taking notes. We're having a conversation. This is how we talk. Look, I don't know what Billy Baker told you. I mean, what can you believe from a boy that's been in a coma for 10 years, right? But whatever he says and whatever you think I'm in my involvement in it, I really had nothing to do with the situation. I was just kind of, you know, there to humor him. Marcus. What? Can I be real with you? Sure. I don't mean to speak so frankly. I think you're lying. Okay. I think you know more than you're letting on. Remember, I did say, Billy Baker told me everything. But you could say that hoping that I would say something that would be different from what he said. I could, couldn't I? Yeah. So that's why I was like, if you just tell me what he said, then I can let you know what... Agent Bucket right. steps in even closer to you and just kind of puts his face next to your shoulder. What are you sniffing, man? That's weird. I don't know you like that. I don't even know what your first name is. Look, dude, I don't know if you're in like some weird stuff or whatever, but like, I'm just running the Taco Bell. I'm not here to get into your weird, like, Marijuana is illegal here, correct? I didn't smoke anything. Yes. I didn't. I know some people, we're at a Taco Bell Express, man. Why do you think people come here and eat tacos that come out of a, a, a tub? Like beef not supposed to do that? This Only does appear that it might be a popular hangout spot for druggies. Yeah, tacos, and bags of chips, the like. Meat sticks, like it's you a whole You hang out gamut. with druggies and the like? Marcus? No. Bennett. No, I don't. Are you a problem child? No, I work here. I'm an employee here. You have here. a pretty clean record. Exactly. Star football player. That's right. Not very well liked. What? Well, I mean with the women in regards to that instance. Wait, you had that on file? We have a lot of things on file. I talked to your friends. A lot of them. The principal as well. Okay. Well, my friends, we're going to talk a little bit later. I don't know why I'm telling you records about me not dating. I mean, I've, I you know, I, get, I can get around if I want to. I just maybe not choose to. Marcus Bennett sees on the window outside a small squirrel is kind of like oh, standing, shit, shit, staring shit, in shit, through shit, the window. Shit, shit. No, 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 What are you doing, Marcus Bennett? Huh? Oh, it's a uh, it's a new cheer. I'm part of the cheerleading squad now. You know, like for real, we gonna be winning. I to you. Shut up. The cops are here. Marcus Bennett watches as this small squirrel jumps down from the window, disappears from view only momentarily to drop on the top of the hood of the black Buick in the front parking lot. Yeah, what's up now? Fuck you, cops. Fuck you. Sketchy, get down! I'm sorry, who's sketchy? Well, right now you are, sir. Giving the me candy, sniffing me, spitting coffee on the ground. Marcus Bennett watches over Agent Bucket's shoulder as Sketchy 
slides his two little paws in through the small gap on the driver's side window and squeezes his body ever so slightly into the vehicle of the agent, what disappearing from view. What is he doing in there? Marcus. What are you doing? Bennett. What? You seem distracted. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. We're going to have a conversation. I, sure. Absolutely. We're going to have a conversation. Okay. Okay. Sure. Look, I don't know what you want, okay? I don't want any trouble, all right? I don't know what Billy Baker's up to. I don't know what anyone's told you. I don't know what everything you know is. I just know that all I want to do is get back to a normal life, okay? Agent Bucket stares into our passenger's eyes. His demeanor changes. He cares. It comforts Marcus. Though he is the one speaking, it appears as if he is, in fact, listening, waiting for Marcus to speak, empathetic and hopeful for a moment with Marcus and Marcus alone. He calmly looks into Marcus's eyes again, exhales, he inhales, exhales, doing, inhales. Marcus, before he knows it, catches his chest rising and falling at the same pattern of that of the agent as the agent stares directly into his eyes. Just pretend. Marcus, you are in the most relaxing place you've ever been. Certainty. Just pretend, Marcus, you are more comfortable than you've ever been. Just pretend, Marcus, that your breathing is slowing. Imagine it giving you deep relaxation. And the more you relax, the more comfortable you feel. The more relaxed your body becomes. Just pretend, Marcus. Every time you take a breath, you feel more and more relaxed to feel what it's like when every muscle in your body is completely relaxed completely stress free truth just pretend Marcus you are relaxing like that right now you know you can relax your body because you've relaxed like this in the past. You remember that feeling, don't you, Marcus? Yeah. yeah. And the more you relax, the more comfortable you feel with my voice, Marcus. Okay. Truth. You can imagine letting go. You can let what? go, Marcus, of every thought. You can what? just pretend just What's happening? like you remember. No. It opens to you, Marcus, and you can just let go. You are so relaxed now that your mind calms. I am here with you, Marcus. Yes. Truth. We are just pretending, which means you realize every time you share the more relaxed you become. What would it be like if you told me everything you saw yesterday, Marcus? Imagine what it would be like to release it all sooner or later. Find yourself in that truth with me, Marcus. Would this help me get back to normal? Will help my life get back to normal if I say everything? Yes. Agent Bucket holds himself in this gaze as 
Marcus rolls his grit for difficulty of 20. Three. Marcus Bennett has five tokens available. That will not be enough. Marcus finds himself in the truth. His truth, not the truth's truth. It is and always is about perspective. Marcus, how do you know Jacob Jewell? Jacob Jewell, we we visited Jacob Jewell. Well, I didn't want to visit him, but Mickey Jones wanted to because she wanted to talk about her father, and Billy Baker wanted to because he thought there was some kind of connection. Why are you sad? Marcus? I feel so alone here. My parents, they work somewhere and I don't know what they do and whenever I try to talk about it, they don't tell me anything and they're never home. And no one understands because I'm not from here and because no one else looks like me here. And I feel like I loved someone, but I don't know who that was. Where have all the pet cats gone, Marcus? I don't know. I'm always here with you, Marcus. Who are you? In this comfortable place, oh. just as you remember, you will share with me, just as you really want to, when you see anything out of the ordinary, Marcus. I just, I just don't want any attention to me, I just want to make it so I can get out of here, I want everything to be normal. If you help me, Marcus. We can make sure that happens for you. You have my card. You will call it. You know that if you help me, you can stay comfortable, Marcus. And relaxed. Welcomed. You'll find your place. Just as you've always wanted. This is your gospel. Thank you, Marcus. M Marcus! Hey, dude, what the fuck, man? Hey, you just standing here for like a couple minutes. What's going on? What are you talking about? What? You were talking to some guy and then he left and you just sat here, just looking at the fucking wall. Did I smoke the weed? No, I didn't even give it to you. Did you eat some of it? No. Maybe I just got high being around it. <laughs> I must have a really high, like low, 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 low tolerance. I don't think that makes any sense at all. Hey. Hey. Yo. Marcus. You gotta come outside. They, they shoo me off with a broom when I get in there. Come on. Dude. What is it? Come on. Outside. Alright, I'm gonna go outside. Do I... Do, do I still hear Sketchy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is a part of your being, Marcus Bennett. It's a part of who you are. I was just checking. I was just As checking. Marcus Bennett looks down at the ground, at Sketchy, you see that there's a small piece of paper that's kind of dra been dragged behind the trash can that remains outside at the main entrance. What's this? Hey. Hey, dude. That, that guy was FBI. That's what he said. What the fuck? And apparently he left and I just was like standing there in a daze. Is, is this that squirrel you talked to? Holy shit, man. <laughs> this is fucking yeah. rad. I, I wish I could rid. hear it. Oh, what is it. What's it saying? What's it saying? Man, fuck that piece of shit. Tell him to go back inside and do his damn job. Go back inside and do your damn job. <laughs> what? 
All right. All right, you happy now? All right, I did something that you asked for me. Now, yeah, I'm return... always looking out for you. Yeah, well, I'm return... part of the gang. I'm return... always looking out for you. Okay, well, then return the favor. You what? gotta do something for me, though. Wait, I got a piece of paper you're gonna want to see. I thought I just did something for you by saying the thing that you just said. No, I set the rules. I'm in charge here. Okay, what do you want? I wear the metaphorical pants in this relationship. You don't wear anything. That's th I said metaphorical, man. <laughs> Look, okay, fine. Keep up. All right. So, there's this guy that walks around. His name's Roger. I need you to take care of him. Okay, first, who's Roger? And second, He's this dude who thinks he can talk to us like you do, but he can't. And he keeps giving us these, like, Cheetos and shit. He's making all the ladies fat. And what is... Okay, first off... Nobody should be eating that much junk food. First off, there's nothing wrong with a little junk in the trunk, okay? Second... I didn't say that. <laughs> second... Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean by taking care of him? I need you to take him? care of him. What does that even mean? He's messing up my people. But giving him all you... this processed food. Look, I already got to work real hard to keep all these squirrels eating healthy. And so, what are you going to tell him to stop? What do you think he's listening to me? Cheetos. What do you think he's listening to me for? I don't even know this guy. All right, you take care, of Roger. What does that even mean? It, you can interpret that however you want. I will say nothing else on the matter. Take care, of Roger. Where is he? I don't know. Okay, so you want me to take care of somebody, which I don't even know what that means, and it's a person I don't even know who it is, and you don't even know where he is. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to wander the streets until I randomly find El when Roger. The, when the network sees him again, I'll let you know. Okay. And then you'll take care of him. Well, can you reach out to the network and at least give me a, a direction? I can't Do you even... see any squirrels around here? We are in a concrete parking lot. I'm risking my life talking to you right now. Well, then where is Squirrel Central? What, are you are you in a gang with other animals, other woodland creatures in the town? By the way, where are the cats? Why you ask me that? I don't know why, but just for some reason, I just thought about that. I've never seen a cat around in this town. Where are they? I don't think you should question things that are like a blessing from God. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? I'm cat? saying we shouldn't go digging our nose in things that we don't want to find the answers to. Do cats eat squirrels? I mean, I don't know what the circle is on this one. Those things are murderers, man. So did you did you take care of the cats? I wish. I can't take care of it for that. They just started disappearing. Okay. All right. Then we'll, this is our deal. I'll go tell this Roger to stop dropping Cheetos on your squirrels, even though they might make your squirrels a little thick, which might mean a little bit nice. So you might want to just open up your horizons. I'm and okay second. with thick squirrels. <laughs> I'm not okay with all the processed food. Okay. Well, I'll take care of that if you find out for me. What happened to all the cats? I don't know why this is important to me right now, but I know I need to know. So, you want me to take care of the cats instead of give you the thing I stole out of the FBI agent's car? Wait, you stole something out of the FBI agent's car? That's what I've been trying to tell you. You told me to yell at Mallory! There's a lot going on! I'm trying to process it all. I was oh, staring yeah, at a yeah. wall for two minutes. Yeah, what was that all about? I don't know. What do That's you have? with the cats? That's... maybe. Wow. So, what do you have? Oh, I, I, I found a suicide note. A what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suicide note. Can I, I see was it? like, whoa, what the fuck? That's let me super see. messed up. I'm going to read it. Okay, let me see it. All right. I mean, thank you, Sketchy. You're the best. Thank you for risking your life to cross this concrete jungle and steal something out of that dude's car that was threatening me. You're the best, Sketchy. Thanks, man. Okay, Sketchy. Of all the talking squirrels I've ever met in my entire life, you are the best one I've ever met. I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. Can I please see the suicide note? Yeah, you can hear. Thank you. He just kind of motions for the piece of paper behind the trash can. And as you take that, the phone rings inside, and you hear calling out, Marcus! Phone! Marcus! All right. I'm There's a bang on the window. I'm coming in. I'm so sorry it apparently worked. I can't remember it working, but it must have worked. Ching 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 you had a life I think you made friends they came for me today and I wanted to hurt them I thought it was a joke and then I found it without remembering you I couldn't remember to look for it but I found it I must have seen it must have been a coward never to be able to do what needed to be done I hope this works maybe you'll be able to see your friends again to my wife, I'm sorry to leave you this way. You know I was never able to let it go. 
Jacob Jewell. And I take the phone. Billy Baker's on the other end. Hello? Marcus? Yeah? Hey, it's, uh, it's Billy. Billy Baker. Oh, what's up, coma boy? Hey, man, uh, heads up, the FBI is probably headed your way. Heads up, he's already here. Bucket? Yeah. Perry Bucket? Yeah, gave me a butterscotch. Did you eat it? Well, yeah, man, it's butterscotch. You ever have those things? They're pretty tasty. Did anything weird happen to you after you ate it? Well, hey, man, I got butterscotch taste in my mouth, and we talked, and then he walked away, and... I did kind of stare at a wall for a couple minutes, but maybe it's because I was just freaking out because the FBI came to me. Okay. Thanks to you. I had a theory that he was trying to drug us or something, so I didn't eat it. Anyway. <laughs> well, maybe you should have called a few minutes earlier, Billy Baker. But, uh, you know, you're always late, right? Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, Mickey and, and, uh, and Sammy and I are going to meet up at the bridge soon uh, to try to figure some stuff out. And... I think you should be there, cause yeah, I know we were working together, but I just I can't really figure out what's going on or why. You're right, Billy Baker. I should be there. I should be there to talk to all of you. Cool. Um, so we'll see you there in, in about an hour. Can you, can you get off work? Yeah, Mallory can close up. Awesome. All right, later, man. Later, Billy Baker. As the phone hangs up. Sky Hawkins pulls into the Taco Bell Express parking lot. You see standing at the window looking out back at you, none other than Marcus Bennett. <coughs> um. Uh. Hey. Hey. <clears throat> Are you here for those tacos? Oh. Is that one weird guy working? Oh. Um. He's that weird guy's always here, yeah. Yeah, no thanks. Okay, understood. I'll only take the tacos if, like, he's not anywhere around. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Plus, some weed got in one of the shells. <gasps> this is going to sound weird, but the squirrel, sketchy. Uh-huh. He gave me this note. Who is he talking to? Who is this to? I have no idea. Your friends. You think maybe? Wait. What is it? So, I have this journal, you know. Yeah? Um. I mean, we all keep journal. I mean, like, I know some of us type our feelings out on computers. Uh, cool. Um, anyways, so there's this journal, and this girl, Rachel, talks about her dad being like a total jerk and like kind of abusive this doesn't even sound like him but i remember being with billy and running into him and definitely matched the person that was in this journal but C could this could he be talking to this rachel i don't know because it we're friends with her oh I, I don't know if i told you this your picture is in this journal what oh my gosh actually i'm i'm so sorry i've been so caught up in my own feelings i haven't even had a chance to explain any of this to you but whoever this person was she asked you out i guess she was your girlfriend eh. that's that's weird so you have a journal with my picture and some girl that we don't know Marcus Bennett remembers that Mallory just moments before was reminding him of the girlfriend he had told him about. Mallory was making it. Are you guys pulling a prank on me? Is this like some kind of joke? I'd never talk to that guy. Not even if he was the last person on earth. Well, that I do believe. Well, it gets scarier because an FBI guy was here earlier asking me about what he referred to as murders. I mean, we're already questioning that bar guy, but... Could it be possible this Jacob Jewell guy? What if that's a fake note? What if someone murdered him too? And what if they think we did it? I'm scared. I'm freaking out. I was near weed today, so I could be on something that's maybe making me freak out even more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how weed works, Marcus. I don't know. I've never tried it before. Oh, my God. 
Marcus Bennett and Sky Hawkins make their way towards the bridge to meet up with Mickey Jones, Billy Baker, and Sammy. As you pull up to the bridge and the sun has just gone down, you see the small group standing there waiting. Hey, uh, thanks for meeting me here. Um, I don't, I don't really remember. I feel like my life is just awake and then asleep and here and then there. That, that, you just did describe your life. That's what you, that's. Yeah, but it's like, it's happening again. And well, like. How about this, man? It's the FBI walking around asking questions. He told me that you said everything to him. He never would say what. I thought it was a trap. So what did you tell him? I told him that I'm the reason Jacob Jewell killed himself. Well, that's a good thing to tell an FBI agent. Dude, good job. Thanks Billy, a lot, why'd man. you do that, man? Billy, why'd you, why would you say that? Oh, God, I don't know. I mean, I think it's probably the right thing to say because it's pretty true. Also, and also, it puts takes everything off of your shoulders. I know you're, what you're dealing with is a much bigger problem, but Sky, why'd you yell at me at lunch today? Like, I thought we were all working together. Sammy, don't ever talk to me, okay? Don't look at me. Don't try and, like, we're not friends. According to this journal, you're a piece of shit. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Is that it? What's... Yeah, it's Rachel's journal. Who is this Rachel? Who is Rachel? Wait, 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 hang on. What do you mean? What are you... Rachel's... Okay, just to clarify, none of you remember Rachel. Sammy! No. I want to go over to Sammy and grab him by his shirt. How do you know Rachel? I'm the chosen one. Shut up, what Sammy. What the hell is this about? He's been on and on about chosen one. I was one. chosen by Rachel. To find her. And bring her back to repay her for all the pain I caused her. Okay. I don't know what high school... I was a bad boyfriend. Either. He was. And I will forever... Be in debt to her kindness and gratitude. And this is my chance, my opportunity to help her. I think I just got really angry at you and I don't know why. But guys, I think everything that's happening, this suicide attempt or, or letter, note, everything that's been happening, the FBI is much bigger than us. Whoever this Rachel person is, she's important. Rachel and was everything. So why don't we remember her? Yeah. I don't know what you all did last night, but you remembered everything yesterday morning. We remember everything that happened last night. Sky got caught on the TV. We went to see the shoveler. You went into a hole. Yeah. Some person summoned you in front of us. She oh. was in a TV. That's fucking yeah. crazy. We remember all that. And yeah, it is crazy. But what's crazier is that everyone keeps referring to this person that we don't know. That we even have a journal of? This makes no sense. I think I'll remember having a girlfriend. Are we you know? supposed to know who this person is? Yeah, you were the only ones that remembered with me. It was me and you four. We saw her two nights ago. She. Billy saw her on the bridge. This bridge? This bridge. You remember being here, don't you? Yeah. But you don't remember her? They're taking her from you. They took her from everyone else, and now they're taking her from you. Right? I well, that's gotta be it. Well, regardless of whether we remember her or not, it looks like she left us this journal for us to find her, to bring her back. And if I've learned anything today, my parents are lying to me. Clearly, there's some FBI guy who talks cryptic, cryptically, and and he thinks he knows things. All well, the, I don't trust any of the adults in this town. If anybody's going to save this Rachel girl, it has to be us. I mean, It's got to be us. It's got to be me. At least your parents are lying you to you. You all can help me. I, I remember everything. You can tell I us about admit, Rachel? Even though it would be the most opportune moment for me to undersell how important you were to her. I will admit because I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to be better for Rachel. She loved you. Okay. You were together. I hated you for that. You remember when I used to call your house? Yeah. 
Yeah, that was why. I was trying to scare you, but I was scared. We, we have to find her. We have to figure out what to do. You, you have her journal. Wait, 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 wait. Sammy. I'm going to walk in closer to Sammy. If we don't remember who this person is, you seem to remember everything. Yeah. Doesn't that make you a even a bigger suspect of us? Suspect for what? For whatever these questions are about. She was taken. We saw her taken. What does it say? The last page. <clears throat> the last page says, I'm sorry for getting you all involved. Be careful and stay safe. She talks about all of us in this journal. As much as I want to hate Sammy, she's telling the truth. It's like she was erased from our memories, from everyone, this entire town. No one knows who she is except for you. Right, so I'm in charge. No, no one said that, oh. Sammy. No one Sammy. Said that. No, I'm not following you, man. No. Not happening. Sammy, okay. you can't tell anybody. You have to keep it between us. About Rachel? Yeah. Don't say her name to anybody else. I, I don't remember what we, what we were doing at that bar, but I do remember that I don't think that was a suicide. I think it had to do with us saying the wrong things to the wrong people. And somebody was listening. We have to be careful. We have to keep it between us. Well, what did you... Us plus Mallory apparently knows. Well, you all ran and... Tibby Left knows me. too. Tibby should know. Tibby knows? Doesn't the comic book guy know too? How many people know about this? Too many. We have to be more careful. But if they can't remember her, it doesn't matter. They won't know what to say. Only I know. No, Mallory. Mallory mentioned Rachel as well. Well, he doesn't know Rachel. He can't remember Rachel. Only I can remember Rachel. Sammy. It's true. Oh, I'm the chosen one. So. Not, not, uh, say chosen one one more time. That felt like a threat. It so, was a threat. Okay. Well. What, you all ran away and left me. What'd you find at the legal office that we were breaking into? Uh, some papers, right? A folder? Let me see. Oh. Would I have these with me? Yes. Okay. You were carrying them. <coughs> well, this was all, this was all I had before. Let me see. And then, of course, the suicide note that we got today. Is that supposed to be... Rachel and Lenny? She had a little brother. They're a bunch of blank pieces of paper. Wait, you mean Rachel is the one in that photo? As in, I killed Rachel? No. When I killed- What do you mean you killed her? What, what? do you mean? Well, I mean, I didn't kill her, but my parents let me know today that uh, Mr. Jewel, Jacob Jewel, his family that died in a car accident yes, it a long it time ago. That was right my, here, my fault. That Rachel... That doesn't that, add up. How would we know a Rachel if... That this isn't... This isn't the Rachel we know. Well, we she has, a, know she a has a mole on her... You don't remember. She has a mole on her left cheek. Whoever this girl and little boys, it's not the Rachel we know. So wait, okay. we don't remember Rachel, and you're even saying the Rachel that's in that information is well, not Well, I don't know if this is a Rachel. I mean, it says that there's a Rachel that died in a... But that she doesn't have a mole. Rachel had a mole in her left cheek. So I don't... I don't... I mean, maybe this is... Fake? I don't... But, Bill, you said that you caused that accident that's in that paper? I mean... Okay, you all don't remember Rachel. Her, her mom and how do I say this in a correct way? Her mom and dad are white. Rachel's Asian. She was adopted from Hong Kong. She always talked about it. Hong Kong cinema. She was. So that's probably why she got along with Mr. Thomas so well. So that's a a different Rachel. I, maybe this is the Rachel that died in the car accident, but Rachel was adopted. She was, this says the daughter of 
Ming Jewel. Dead on the scene, Jacob's wife, 29-year-old Ming Jewel, and their daughter, Rachel Jewel, six, and their son, Lenny, who was one-year-old. Like, this is... This, whoever this is, died. How many fingers does she have? Can you tell in that photo? I can't tell. Her hand's holding her brother's. Well, not everybody in Kolok has nine fingers. Did the Rachel you knew, that we knew, she had ten? <sighs> no, she had nine. But her parents wanted her to fit in, so she, when she was adopted, they removed her finger. They were afraid that she'd have two strikes against her being adopted foreign and not being a local, so they tried to make her feel normal. This town so is she messed was up. really upset about it all the time. There's an old guy in the woods. His name Roger? No. What's his Ger name? Gerald? Uh, Rachel, Rachel knows him. Mm -hmm. Or Gerard? Is it Gerard? Gerard. He, uh. he said that there was a girl in the town and she's gone now. And we needed to find her name. We have her name now. We have the start. We may be back at square one, <coughs> but I think it's up to us to solve this. I'm gonna go talk to him tomorrow. But what are we doing now? There's, I was working all day yesterday, I couldn't find anything, and then you guys just forget. Where do we go now? We have time. All I have is this journal. Okay, well what does, well, do we is there any clues in there? Any Anywhere yeah. we should go? Uh, there's a person that we should be looking for. Angela uh, Lung? Okay. If we can find her, I feel like maybe we could find some answers. Uh, this Gerard person is in Rachel's journal too, so maybe we can talk to him. I've, I've been looking for this symbol. It's like a, a upside down U. With two all right, we're looking for people in a symbol. It you know, crazy idea. Maybe we should go to the library? Not that I'd ever be there. I mean, gross. Look at books? Well, yeah, they might have what we're looking for. Yeah. Any kind of history on the city? Anything to do with that symbol? Yeah. Something. They would probably have stuff about the city council. In that file, there's a letter, right? A letter to Mr. Jewel about s synchronicity and this from the city council, right? Okay. I mean, we could also we don't have many options. Look up this Angela in the phone book. Yeah. It says something about Jacob Jewel moving forward on something. So this letter is very clearly his family died and Rachel was adopted. Do you think... Do you think his family died and then he just adopted a replacement family? Or it could be possible that he forgot them like we forgot this Rachel and then they were easily able to replace them. We don't know. Okay. But he says something about making some sort of deal. Whatever that's about. Wait, wait, wait. A deal? Yeah, it's like he was going to... So he's gonna like move forward on some sort of deal, and the Kolok City Council Does it didn't say what think it's a good idea and what denied kind of it. Deal? We re we receive your request to move forward with secret needing, and unfortunately, this is not something we can abide by in good faith. Do you understand the complexity of what you're asking for us? I'm sure wholeheartedly, we do not make our decision lightly. Anna's methods fly in the face of everything we believe in. We do not know yet to this day the consequences of her actions. The name Anna strikes a tone. A memory floods back to young Sky Hawkins. Wait. I have... I have an agreement from that same company. Anna? Yeah. Sky Hawkins remembers the name of Shiloh Anna on the plaque inside of Mammon. 
<clears throat> when I was when I fell into that hole. You guys remember that? Yeah. There was this plaque. It had that same name on it. Anna. How do you spell that? A N A H. Yeah. 1848 to 1962, right? Wow. Wait, 1848 to 1962? Is it Shiloh or not? Well, this was in 1980, so... Would it be, like, son or daughter or something? There's well, only... I mean, there's records at the library, right? Yeah, I think we need to check this out. This could be the connection. We're looking for people... In history. So I think Mickey's right. And it's very possible that whatever the Kulak City Council decided not to do, Anna did instead, and they don't approve of it. In Rachel's journal, that date is, is in here, 1962. It has to mean something. Yeah, I think we need to do some, some digging. I mean, I'm sorry, that's a bad choice of words. Uh, we need to go do some research. Yeah, it's a good idea. All right, we going? Yeah. We could uh, go take library. my car if you guys want. And you're sure. the only one with a car. Yeah. One, yeah, two. I really... Uh, uh, Shotgun. <laughs> okay. We're going to go to the library and research on a na. Okay. Why What's are you talking only... like that? What? Why are you talking like that? Like what? Like a robot. What? What are you talking about? You just said that like Marcus a robot. Oh, like, you like Max Headroom? Like, hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like that? No, like... We're going to the library. As this conversation's yep. happening, they're all getting in the car. To do this. Making their way That's inside. Really bad pressure I eat poop. My name is Marcus. I never and say the that. car starts to drive away <laughs> hey, towards poop. the library. The library is only about a half mile from the bridge. It's only open until 9 p.m., so you've only got about an hour left until it closes. The Kolok Public Library is an old but rather large building. The chief librarian prides himself in the collection that they have amassed. Known for its collection on scientific studies and its database built on synchronity, connecting it to his sister cities all around the world. The tech in this library is extremely advanced. Some of the most advanced in the country in terms of data. Oh man, this place is so cool actually. Stephen Cole stands at the front entrance as you walk inside, excited to see Mickey again. Mickey! Uh, hey, Mr. Cole. It's been so long since you've come by to see me. Yeah, uh, I got busy. You know, I, I can't be hanging out at the library all the time. Uh, hey, could you help us? We need to find some people for a book report. Well, you need access to the database. Of course, you have you have your card? Yeah, I have my card. Whoa. It's good to see you again. <laughs> what are you reading? Uh, we're just going to go do our research, but thanks, Mr. Cole. No, uh, no, I'm curious. Uh, what yeah, are you reading? What's the last book what's she read? What's the last book she read? Yeah. Babysitter's Club. What is it? <laughs> Nancy Drew. <laughs> Strangely, it was of mice and men. Wow. Oh, Listen. A book about mice? This is not what we're here for. It's quite strange. Do we have people to honestly, find? It's... All right. Thank Usually you, Mr. Cole. a little Cole. more advanced than that. Please. <laughs> uh, d d f you know the way, Mickey. Uh, yeah, I know the way. You know the way, Mickey, to the library. So yeah, all right, I read. What do you do at the comic book shop, huh? I don't do anything at the comic book shop. You yeah, okay. go to the comic book shop? No, I don't. Shut your mouth. Hey, Mickey. Yeah, all right. You're getting a little brave. Maybe put your hands off your hips and... Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go to the database. Yeah, just do what you're I supposed to do, I know where to Mickey. find no. it. Just do what you're supposed to do. Steven is an eccentric man. He's as normal as normal can be in societal kind of acceptable appearance. Um, but he's eccentric in verbal communication and drifting thoughts in a way. He's very slender, a townie, only nine fingers. Though he's never shown any ill will towards Mickey and the other tins who frequent his library. He just ushers you on as the lights flicker on. These lights somehow magically turn on as you walk into those sections. Oh, fancy. You've really never come to the library before, any of you? Well, I mean, if I have to for like a school project, but not like for fun. Yeah, yeah, that'd be weird. It smells weird in here. Yeah, they're making me quiet, and I 
don't like that. There is no one else in the library except for the four of you. The chili cook-off is going on in the other side of town. Most likely all of Kolok is currently there. It's quiet. Very quiet. The hum of the CRT monitors kind of vibrates through the air as Mickey Jones sits down at the database computer and enters her library login information. <laughs> Just don't... don't look. Who do we want to look up first? Uh... Oh, this Angela girl. Yeah. Angela... What's her last name? E-O-N-G. Okay. Mickey Jones will roll her brains. Difficulty of eight. Eight. Or is that this one? As she opens up the very slow database, the all green screen with green text as the CRT monitor flickers. Uh, uh, five plus one. Mickey Jones has ten tokens available. Oh, I will use two. I will remind you that everything works on a sliding scale. I'll use four. Yeah. So that's a success by two? Sure. Don't want to overdo it. <laughs> As you type in the name, we'll say only 50 entries appear instead of the thousands that could possibly have appeared. You notice that a couple do list Hong Kong. Most of them coming from Asia, of course. Synchronity luckily having sister cities all around Asia. The, 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 Hong Kong. She's always talking about Hong Kong. That's where she was adopted from. Did she ever mention who her birth parents might have been? She didn't know. Hmm. She was adopted when she was really young. Well, how many of these Angelas are from Hong Kong? There's two. Uh, click on that one. As Mickey Jones clicks, a as the screen starts to so fill with fast. information. <laughs> My gosh! A wall of text and the readout of pictures and a resolution the rest of you have never uh, seen before at the computers at school. This is actually pretty amazing. You should come to the library more often. The first Maybe entry mentions this woman currently of 40 years of age residing in Hong Kong working for Synchronity, in fact. Well, that's suspicious. I don't... It doesn't look like Rachel. Try the other one. Okay. As Mickey Jones clicks on the second name. So freaking help. Click it. Blazing speed. You can hear the sound of the modem from behind the computer making its noise as it works through the information. Missing. What? 1981. A story appears. It takes a while to translate the information. The database working extra hard to get you the information you need. It doesn't appear that all of the translation is in fact correct, as certain words seem misplaced. But there is a picture. As this picture appears, Sammy points. That's... He gets in close. Who is? There's a mole on her left cheek. It says this girl went missing. But this says it's Angela. What does she write about in the diary? That there's a debt that needs to be paid and that her dad would sometimes mention this Angela person when he was drunk. And then something about a Daniel. Like Dude. replacement body stuff? I don't know. He didn't say that. It Clones? Was, it was about a debt. Would Daniel be the younger brother you said she had? No, Lenny. His Len Lenny, Lenny was the younger brother. That's that's Rachel, and that's Lenny. It says here that uh, this Angela and her brother went missing in 1981 from Hong Kong. So There was a year-long search right around the time that Rachel was adopted. So let me get this straight. A car crash happens in 1980 that has a Rachel and a Lenny, but not the Rachel and Lenny that you know. No! And then a year later, 
two people that look like the Rachel Lenny that you know yeah. are now all of a sudden Rachel, Rachel Lenny here, Lenny. even though they're really Angel, Angela and Daniel. Do you no, think that I Jacob used that's... them for this debt? Daniel doesn't sound Angela Long. Daniel. It Could it be William? I don't know. It, it says, I guess Daniel wasn't his real name. It was William or something like that. She talks about this Daniel person. What else does it say about well, Daniel on there? It said, uh, ever since I lost my car and stopped, uh, stopped hearing from Daniel, I started taking walks around town at night. That's, that's, that's how, that's it. But where, what about the part about William? Where does it say that? says, but I guess Daniel wasn't his real name. It was William or something like that. He said something about a debt just like Daniel did. It also talks about Portland. And the sheriff. I'm getting confused. I don't know. I don't know. As the computer screen turns off and Whoa. all the lights in the building go out. <gasps> Is that power outage? What happened? Only the small glow of the power outlets, orange, kind of flicker and remain. You hear a voice okay. coming from the other side of the computers. Sorry, he does that sometimes. Who? As you hear this voice... A small boy with a large afro sitting across from the computer peers his head around looking directly at Mickey. He forgets as his imagination wonders that others may be here. I'm disenfranchised youth of class discrimination. Nice to meet you. Uh, how long have you been sitting there? I mean a while. I'm an idea. Well... Almost. I'm an unformed one. I was never truly realized. I'm working on that myself. Or I was. If I can, I doubt it will work out. He rarely listens or finishes a thought. Follow me. Whoa. What? What? We'll have to get him to let you out. Who's. Let us out of what? What? The library. It's locked now. Did Mr. Cole close up? Huh? Well, on accident. He forgot you were here, probably. His mind wanders. How are you stuck here? What do you mean, stuck? Well... I'm an idea. An uninformed one. Uh, I was never truly realized. I don't understand why you're saying that. <sighs> Follow this kid's me. weirder than us. Well, most people can't see me. I knew... I was about to say, I figured I would have seen you by now. Yeah, well, I know. I knew the moment you walked in here that you could, though. It feels good to talk to something complete. Huh. Are you trying to tell me you're a ghost or something? No, that's stupid. Yeah. You are complete, right? Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. So are you. No, I'm an idea. What I mean, we're all mean? ideas. Whose idea are you? Yeah. Well, f follow me. The small boy gets up. You can kind of see from the glow of the orange uh, surge outlets on the floor, lifting up a small glow hue. He's very short, probably only about three and a half feet tall. His afro is almost comical in size for his small posture and body, but he walks with the confidence and starts making his way down a hallway, where at the end of this hall, you can see light shimmering coming out from under a doorway. Whoa. Where are you taking us? Well, we gotta go and get you out of here, so... Who's you know. gonna get us out of here? The librarian. The li else? Well, we Can he see you? What? Mr. Cole, can he see you? Well, I'm his idea, after all. Disenfranchised youth of class discrimination leads you all down this dark hallway. He leads you to a wooden door. Upon opening that door, our passengers see Stephen Cole sitting alone in a chair, a book in one hand, a scotch in the other, flanked by a collection of moving, breathing oddities. 
a woman, bent in half. Her stomach split to reveal a beam of colored light. A nude man sits naked with an arrow in his back. Next to him, a beautiful woman draped in a sequined dress with a compact bow on her shoulder. There's a sound of laughter coming from the back, haunting, overwhelming, revealing a group of older women holding wine glasses, mouths wide open. <laughs> As their faces turn side to side, their blouses covered in blood. On the metal slab beneath them, the body of a man gutted, his blood running in an infinite, infinite loop from the table to the floor, back to the bottle of wine, to the glass, to the body. An old gray man, stubbled face, gray hair, approaches wearing a blue jumpsuit. He is followed by a slightly younger man wearing a red hat and brown coveralls. He leans in to the group of you. Hello. I'm... Jim, this is James. We are memory. And oh, how fragile it is. And the lies it can tell. Stephen Cole now looks up from his book. Sorry, kids. Uh, the library is closed. I knew there I, was some freaky shit that went down in the libraries. I forgot you were here. Disenfranchised youth of class discrimination steps forward. They can see me. They can see uh, all of us. Stephen drops to his knees. And what can appear to be a mix of shock, of fear. Are you God? And a little bit of delight. <laughs> Wait, how do you see my ghosts? Do they haunt you too? He said he wasn't a ghost. Well, they're my children. Uh, Mr. Cole, what is all this? These are my failures. Oh, someone's what? seeing them. My idea is that I've never seen the light of day. Well, I don't want to see him now. Can you just get us out they of here, please? They haunt me. They terrorize. So you don't want them around either? Me. They in. They hold me down, taunting me in my inability to move forward. Let them go. How? You ideaed them. <laughs> Unidea them. I can't. I'd have to finish them. Yeah, he's probably not going to do that. We've been trying for a long time. He doesn't listen. He never listens. I want to just like hold his head and be like, concentrate. <sighs> Finish this. And then you, get you, the hell out of here. You shouldn't be seeing this. Nobody should be seeing this. Well, this we is, won't see it if you finish point. it. Complete the whole point it. is that nobody has to see this. That's why, Complete that's why they're unfinished. Why are they here? They're unfinished because nobody is supposed to see them. I don't know. I don't know why you can see. No one's supposed. They're my, they're my failures. They're mine. Well, then finish, finish them like you would finish a book. You wouldn't half read a book, right? <coughs> so don't half make an idea. But some of them are horrible, these ideas. The, the most horrible one, it hides in the walls. It's rippling me, the, the fast emptiness of it all, the black canvas. It, it, when it speaks to me, I feel as if I lose a piece of myself every, every, every time. But I can't. But I can't, I can't, I can't ever put the brush to the canvas. I don't know how, but, but what, 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 what would happen if I completed it and no one cared and it just sat in nothingness? Then it would just live its life like sometimes you do when you are complete and no one sees you. It happens. But, 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 but why? Why would you? Why? Why do it? Why? Why finish? <laughs> You're not supposed to see this. No one's supposed to see this. What if it's rejected? What if it's laughed at? Am I a hack? What if it's a copy of a copy of a copy? Why? Why? Why do I pretend that anything I feel? has not already been felt. 
already been discovered or dissected, regurgitated from the mouth to the bristle to the canvas. Why even try? They haunt me. Why does that matter? They haunt me! What you're saying, I'm, I'm just asking. Why does it matter? If it comes from you, then it maybe is inspired by another idea. It is going to be new because it has your stamp on it. And what if it's not seen? I mean, some of these people haven't even seen for the past few days, and now they're a part of my life. You just never know. <laughs> Mystical, you have to finish this. You've got to get out of here. No, 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 no. I can't. I can't. I... I... No one's supposed to see this. I'm just... Okay, I, stop do it. saying that. We all just see do it. it. It doesn't matter. It was just you four. Five. You're just... You're just... Why can you... Why can you see my failures? I want... I want to... I want to... Put my... Forehead on his to share brain. <laughs> to see if that helps... Him get through this. As he's, uh... Leaning in, I want to use my premonition to see if any danger might be coming up. As I'm like Billy Baker back, just assessing everything. <laughs> uses three tokens to call out to a voice in the void. Hey, uh... Hey, are you there again? Yes, Billy. Um... Real quick, we're about to do something really weird in a really, really, really strange situation. The emptiness comes for you. Okay, we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, is there any danger coming our way right now? Yes, Billy. The emptiness. Should we turn around and run? Yes, Billy. Great. Before the emptiness catches you. Before it completes. Okay, cool. That's all I needed. Uh, we'll talk soon. Guys, we have to go. Now. Trust me. How do we get out of here? Follow me. All right. I'm going to start running back up to where we came from. Billy Baker will now roll his flight. Difficulty of 12. No, you've seen my failures. No, no, no. No one's supposed to see. It's like you've ripped open a part of me and you've looked inside to something that was always supposed to be hidden. How would you feel if I did that to you? How would you feel if I opened up your mind and looked at everything that you have dropped, everything that you've left behind? How do you think that would make you feel? It's not fucking fair! Listen, Mr. Crazy. I mean, Mr. Cool. Uh, I'm going to start motioning for everyone to kind of get behind me. <coughs> I think, I think there's something behind you. What is that? What is that unfinished piece of shit? Oh my gosh, look at how ugly that is! Oh my god! Oh, How'd you make that? that? We have that? your brain! Run! Run! <laughs> Let's just go! <laughs> Uh-oh. As the faces holding the knives turn, looking directly at the group of you. Oh, they're still holding knives, great. As he stands, his body's shaking now. Uh, no, it's not fair. It's not fair. I now need everyone to roll their flight with a difficulty of 12. My flight on the difficulty 11, I rolled a 9 plus 1, 10. Do I have a token? Billy Baker has one token available. I'll use it. The rest of you have a difficulty of 12. <coughs> All right. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Man. Get to roll again. Six. And five. Nice. That's 11. Plus one. That is a success. I got an eight. Do I have any? Sky Hawkins has eight tokens available. Uh, um, can I use four? Sky Hawkins succeeds. Four plus one, five. Marcus Bennett has... Six tokens available, God, but this is a group activity as the four of you are together, and you can assist him narratively in helping him if you would like to hand him one of your tokens. Oh. All of you have enough to do so. But you said I have six tokens? You have six, but you rolled a five, correct? Difficulty of 12. Oh, shoot. Okay. You are one away. Okay. If someone would like to narratively help him out of this situation, you will be allowed to do so, but you must sell it in the story. So I use all my tokens and I run, but I do like that 80s horror, like, oh, I fell. My knee. Somebody get Marcus. 
Who would um, like to assist? I'll assist. Please tell me how. <laughs> um. <laughs> I grab, run over to Marcus. <laughs> that looks so stupid. And I pick him up and be like, "Come on, dude, we gotta get out of here." Uh, okay. So I run. I run with her. So you are now all running together as you start to run towards the exit of the library. As you turn and look behind you, you see the small boy standing in the doorway with his hands out. Come on, man, just stop. It's not worth it. You gotta worry about yourself. You just gotta let it go. As he continues to walk forward, some of the others behind moving, moving towards Jim and in fact James, now flanked from either side with the small boy. You gotta let it go. Let it go, just stop. But some of the others continue to move forward. And as you look over your shoulder, making your way towards that front entrance, before the front door, you see in front of you a black square. It sits motionless. What's that? Is that another idea? Probably. Can we get around it? You can try. <laughs> the black motionless square remains solitary. It is a void. It is something that can be seen through, but not in two. It is darker than the darker black you've ever seen. It finds a way to be negative in the most negative of space. Um, are there any uh, I... windows nearby? Yes, there are. Are they open? They are not, mm. but there are windows. Can I grab a chair and throw it into the one of the windows to try and break it? If the dice will have their way, yes, please do. Roll your flight for me, difficulty of 12. <laughs> Uh, Woo, that's a 10. I roll again. Yeah. Exploding dice. Uh, 15. Sky Hawkins picks up one of the chairs sitting at the computer database, throws it through the window as the window crashes. Whoa! And you hear coming from the back, No, stop, stop, stop! Quick, quick, get out! Let's go through the window! I'm going through the window. Everyone jumps through the window. I'll need the rest of you to roll a flight for me. Difficulty of six as the path has been cleared for you. <laughs> Five plus one, six. I rolled a one plus one. Mickey Jones has seven tokens available. What was the difficulty? A six. I will use four. Because you have a plus one on that? Yes. I have, yeah. So I have a two. Marcus Bennett. Uh, I have a two plus one three. Marcus Bennett is currently three away. Someone is going to have to help Marcus Bennett on his way out. I'll help him. Tell me how. Though I am smaller, <laughs> I will help by like pulling him through the window. <laughs> so you pick him up and start to drag him through the window as you all yeah, fall I was like, to the ground. Can I give him some leverage? Yeah. I was like, I was like, couldn't, I got, I got hold of the window, but I couldn't like move my legs up to get me all the way through. So then she grabbed my arms and. I thought you were an athlete. I thought you were scrawny. <laughs> as you fall to the ground and start to move your way away from the library, you see, as you hear a scream, you turn and behind you, you see none other than Sammy going <gasps> to jump out that window. No one asked, of course. Oh. As he goes to jump out that window, and then you see his arms as he is pulled into the darkness. Sammy! The void has taken him. You hear the cries from inside the library. The cries of a broken man. A man who never meant for his failures to be seen. Across the street, sitting on the hood of his black Buick, is none other than Agent Bucket. As he pops a butterscotch into his mouth. Interesting. And that is where we will end tonight's episode of Colock 1991. <laughs> I was you. about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, passengers at the table and at home for your support of this show. If you enjoyed, please do hit the follow button or think about subscribing. It would mean the world to us. This show is on every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can catch up 
on episodes on YouTube. And for anything you may have missed tonight due to Twitch being twitchy, you can find when the video goes live on YouTube as we have recorded it locally. And we'll make sure that you do not miss any of the story. Please do set your calendars for every Monday night at 6 p.m. and tell your friends if you enjoyed the show. We are a small, independent company working our asses off to try to bring you the best content that we possibly can, and your support is the only thing that keeps us alive. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Aw, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Everyone here except Shovel is sick, so hats (laughs) We have allergies. It's allergies. Spring is hitting us nerves. I'm so freaking hard. I'm yeah. sorry for all my sneezes, everyone. I can't <laughs> help it. Thank you all for pushing through it and uh, the whole great great show. show. I was show like, night. keep your butterscotch. I got cough drops. <laughs> that was a good butterscotch, actually. Well, I really that. as we do, I would like to take this moment to thank all the individuals who supported the show tonight and allow us to come back next week. So let me pull that up right now. Shout out to Monica Magana for the amazing artwork that you see on screen. And Alex Neat for all the music that you heard throughout the episode. Yes. Um, I can't wait to keep playing this song more for for the FBI. I oh, love it so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Going to pull this up right now. Oh, and shout out to Amir back there. I know we had some issues tonight with Wirecast, but that whole transition scene um, with uh, Marcus and the FBI agent. Sweet. I dare y'all to speculate how we pulled that off. (laughs) (laughs) Even with shitty software. How did the background just just fade away from that? I just actually disappeared. They're probably like, oh, I bet it's green screen. (laughs) Cut cut to Zach real quick, Amir. Show him. I didn't know green screen. Ain't no green screen. That's oh, wood. Oh, they must have—they uh, must have motion tracked around his body live. Yeah, that's yeah. wood right there, baby. That's right, right, right. <laughs> that's wood. Also, I mean, apparently there were some tweets that the the, the site in general was having issues. So. Oh, Twitch was having issues yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get into it. Phil, it, Phil Turner. Some memories are worth fighting for. Sky, Billy. Mickey and Marcus. Ooh. Foolish 88 uh. for rumor number one. Metis Fatum for Billy. Um, sorry about the rumor problem. Here's the video. In the Billy, mini. Billy. Uh, Logan Pars, rumor two. I overheard the principal talking about Mr. Jewel. <coughs> I couldn't hear what he was saying, but he shut up immediately when I walked by. Kind of suspicious. Ooh. Evidence for yay for Colock Day. It's been, <coughs> I've been really amazed and fallen in love with this show. Also, Eridence uh, was the person who had the NPC that was the librarian. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Well, good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sammy's on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that before he passed away, Mr. Jewel had been fighting with members of the town council. Ooh. Logan Pars, uh, I think Billy will need these tokens. Mr. Fantasy. Damn right yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, walk through those crops, Billy. <laughs> uh, stump for Sky, Sky, Billy, Billy, Mickey, Mickey, Marcus, Marcus, Ooh. spreading some Token love. Nice. Sagittopian for Sky. J Pistol. Rumor three. I saw a whole bunch of cops uh, cardoning off some land uh, out by one of the trailheads coming back from a hike. They heard me along before I could see anything, but something big must have gone down to get that many cops out there. Jabberwocky. Rumor two. I heard Jacob Jewell had been on the outs with the council for a while. I wonder what happened. J Pistol. Good question, Billy. Elecky. A token for Marcus. Phil K. Turner, keep fighting the man, man. Billy. J. Ooh. Pistol, keep cool, Marcus. Luziel Wright for Marcus. Game of Joe B. Dear God, Marcus, use this to get away. <laughs> <laughs> Sailor Aurora, token for Marcus. Uh, Kelsey, uh, Mickey and Sky. Winston EXE, hello, I gotta help the coma boy, Billy. Ooh. Game of Joe B. The out of towner and his suit stopped coming in for candles. Not too upset about it. He spit coffee all over the gas station, and of course, Mallory didn't help clean it up. Rumor four. WCH uh, tipped many items on the police report regarding Jacob Jewell and his death have been redacted or went missing. Sailor Aurora, token for Mickey. Mel Pamino, uh, finishing evidence for rumor one. Andy Altman was leaving work in the middle of the night that night and saw the shoveler. There was dirt on his shovel, but I guess that's normal, right? WCH, rumor two, some of Jacob Jewell's possessions went missing after his death. WCH, rumor two, some of the council members seem reluctant or uncomfortable talking about Jacob Jewell and his death. J Pistol, hope you studied up on that Dewey Decimal System, hashtag Mickey. (laughs) Phil K. Turner, 
don't be embarrassed about loving books, Mickey. I'm gonna little go back mouse to that, that library jumps. Now. Yeah. Uh, little mouse that jumps. There was a storage van outside Mr. Jewel's office and home to collect all of his legal records. No one is quite sure what that storage will be though, or who is paying for it. J Pistol for Stay Safe, Billy, and Sailor Aurora five tokens for Billy. Ooh, thank thank you. you all so much. Thank you allow you. us to keep doing great. this show every week. Thank you. Thank uh, you, you all are absolutely amazing. Seriously though, if you enjoy the show, tell others that you know enjoy D and D or tabletop RPGs. We're really, really trying to do something unique and different. And um, I know uh, this was our last week with Front Page, so next week will be a whole different ball game. So we need everyone everyone who showed up and enjoyed the show to show back up next week. The future of the show depends on it. So keep showing up live on Monday nights. Thank you all so much. We'll be back tomorrow for our Call of Cthulhu RPG and I believe I'm going to be playing some video games and we also have at 4pm, not 3pm this week uh, a show that we're doing called This Will Be Deleted and that is where I literally show you all the tech tricks that we did and teach you how to do them. And then we go through and uh, for those that don't know, we also have in our Discord a when, when you all encounter people in the town, those are all characters created by the chat room. So uh, you as a viewer can go into our Discord, you can make a character that lives in the town, and then it can show up on the show. And when we hit our goal, I bring in an official one, but anytime they go to any location, there's a chance that they're going to run into people that you created, and you bring them into this world. So that's, that's really rad. And we will read through those tomorrow on the show, and dive in deeper and deeper, and I will answer any questions you have, uh, and I will lie about most of them. So... <laughs> This is Rad. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Have a good sleep after that. You found yourself <laughs> back at the start.